what episode 10 of her podcast is going to be because everyone's going to get real tired hearing her just talk about Tom Sandoval. Sounds like such an interesting podcast. When she said Sandoval, yeah. I was like, what? I right. remember my friend Sandoval at my house, but I'm like, with Sandoval, just Tom Sandoval. Yeah. He was my number one. Yeah. With Tom Sandoval. Your station is Sandoval. I said about Miami girl, I said, Sandoval. I'm sure, Tom Sandoval is a massive Mala <laughs> right. fan. I don't want to be associated with anyone who works with Tom Sandoval. Thoughts on Tom's passion speeches towards Rachel? Tom, on Tom who's? Sandoval. Obviously, Sandoval. And the second verse is about Sandoval. Sandoval and Sandoval aside, I study Sandoval's behavior now. Sandoval did a voiceover too. He said Sandoval was the hotter Tom. Everyone who came up to see the Toms, they were so excited for both of them and hugging both of them. And Tom and Rachel, warm with the mustache. <laughs> Tom Sandoval and Rachel are missing for a solid three hours. Seeing Tom gas her up, you know, all seasons. Tom and Raquel, to see they filmed together just because he's with Tom. Sandoval relationship with you was neither of you were faithful no, to each other. Not at all. They were also very, we were very, young. very yes. messy, very young. What's your take on Billy and Sandoval? We're sleep- we're I think it's true. You think it's about Billy Lee? I think it was Billy Lee. I kind of think something maybe did happen with him and Billy back in the day. Oh, he makes the statement once a cheater, always a cheater. True. Yeah. yeah. Sandoval fertilizing Ariana's eggs. I'm like, are you guys just hitting? You're like talking points in this right now because it was weird. Sounds like such an interesting podcast. I'm sorry that you have to look at my face and listen to my voice over and over and over to figure out the best parts because how do you do that? I have never, ever been happier. Who is she? Who is she? Who is she? Where did you find her? what episode 10 of her podcast is going to be because everyone's going to get real tired hearing her just talk about Tom Sandoval. Sounds like such an interesting podcast. When she said Sandoval, yeah. I was like, what? Right. I remember my friend Sandoval at my house, but I'm like, with Sandoval, just Tom Sandoval. Yeah. He was my number one. Yeah. With Tom Sandoval. Your station is Sandoval. I said about Miami girl, I said, Sandoval. I'm sure, Tom Sandoval is a massive Mala right. fan. I don't want to be associated with anyone who works with Tom Sandoval. Thoughts on Tom's passion speeches towards Rachel. Tom, on Tom who's? Sandoval. Obviously, Sandoval. And the second verse is about Sandoval. Sandoval and Sandoval aside, I study Sandoval's behavior now. Sandoval did a voiceover too. He said Sandoval was the hotter Tom. Everyone who came up to see the Toms, they were so excited for both of them and hugging both of them. And Tom and Rachel, warm with the mustache. <laughs> Tom Sandoval and Rachel are missing for a solid three hours. Seeing Tom gas her up, you know, all seasons. Tom and Raquel, to see they filmed together just because he's with Tom. Sandoval relationship with you was neither of you were faithful no, to each other. Not at all. They were also very, we were very, young. very yes. messy, very young. What's your take on Billy and Sandoval? We're sleep- we're I think it's true. You think it's about Billy Lee? I think it was Billy Lee. I kind of think something maybe did happen with him and Billy back in the day. Oh, he makes the statement once a cheater, always a cheater. True. Yeah. yeah. Sandoval fertilizing Ariana's eggs. I'm like, are you guys just hitting? You're like talking points in this right now because it was weird. Sounds like such an interesting podcast. I'm sorry that you have to look at my face and listen to my voice over and over and over to figure out the best parts because how do you do that? I have never, ever been happier. Who is she? Who is she? Who is she? Where did you find her? Hello, everyone, and welcome back to my channel, stand-up comedian and pop culture vulture, Jolene Lunzer, here for another episode of No Offense, All Offense. Let me get my hat straight here. Um, The show about all things pop culture, all things um, reality TV, our favorite stuff. We roast it. We recap it. We take a comedic look at trending stories and things going on in with our favorite entertainers. (laughs) As I try to get my hat straight, I cannot get it straight. Oh, well, it's going to be a little off. All right. So um, I wanted to share that video with you because that is a video, except for the ending, I kind of tweaked a little bit, but that is a video edit that Rachel Raquel Levis, Rachel Savannah Levis, which is she's saying now, uh, made and put on her Instagram. And today we're going to be talking about her all things Vanderpump. Um, a lot of stuff going on there. Rachel released a new episode of her podcast, Rachel Goes Rogue, and she went really, really, really rogue. <laughs> so we're going to roast it. We're going to recap it. We're going to take a comedic look, you guys. Hello to everyone joining in the chat. Uh, remember that I'm very opinionated. My opinions might be different than yours, but you're welcome to have your opinion in the live chat and the comment section after the video post. We don't have to agree, but as long as uh, you're not being an a-hole, I'm not being an a-hole. We could just agree to disagree and be opinionated pop culture vultures. That's my opinion! That's my opinion! (laughs) Oh my goodness. So smash that like as you're coming in. I'm pouring myself a fresh Diet Coke. Get yourself your favorite beverage and let's have some fun. If you want to support the channel further than liking or subscribing, which is so appreciated when you like and subscribe, we are 
getting closer and closer every day to 37,000 subs, which is amazing. Thank you. You can always send a super chat while we're live. You can send a super thanks after the video post. Thank you to those of you who have been doing that. And for all the birthday love again, you guys, I still have Venmos and cash apps and PayPal's coming in from people. I appreciate it. People are still sending me things off my Amazon wish list, and I'll show that to you guys um, as they come in. And then uh, people are still uh, just sending me so much birthday love. It's sending me things to my PO box. I have to go check my PO box. So I appreciate you guys. Uh, Aquarius season is not over. I'm not going to let it be over. All right. Um, so yeah, it's like a little pregame for VPR. We're pre-gaming. Smash the like, you guys. All right. So ooh, ooh, ooh. If you wanna, you know, uh get more information about my Amazon list, my PO box, my Venmo Cash App, PayPal, YouTube membership, um, or Patreon, uh, you can check that out. It's all in the description. Okay. Oh my goodness. I know Esther is. We're going to talk about that, too. Did you see Sandoval's comments in the New York Times article comparing Scandoval to George Floyd and the OJ trial? I will say it's it's very similar to the OJ trial, you know, because that man, he just he murders. OK, Sandoval. Oh, he just I want to stab my eyes out when I watch him. OK, when I think he can't get any worse, he always proves me wrong. Yeah. I saw that. I haven't read the whole thing, but I, uh, oh my goodness. All right, you guys, super cringe, super cringe, so cringe. Every time he talks, it gets worse, it gets worse. Um, Sagal, thank you so much. So much love and encouragement to you from Copenhagen. Oh my gosh, thank you, thank you. I appreciate that. We've got people from Liverpool. Welcome, welcome. Smash that like. Thank you, guys. We are going worldwide. Okay. So, um, Rachel Raquel, let's get to that first. We'll get to the Sandoval episode. I can't get into too much right now. I need him to just, but we'll talk about it. We will talk about it. We will roast it. I might even do a separate video about that as well. We'll get there. But Rachel Raquel already has 10 episodes of her podcast. I think I missed eight of them. Uh, and they're they're very short, all right? And we've been kind of roasting and recapping, but obviously I've fallen behind with that because I was like, holy shit, episode 10, Rachel Raquel, we hardly knew. And in episode 10, um, this one is um, talking, okay, the title is chapter 10, talking about her and she's not even there. Ooh, oh my gosh. Okay, let's pull up. Some, uh, let's see here. Let's see if we can get um, some of my artwork of Rachel Raquel and we'll uh, pop some of that. Actually, we'll, we'll put some of these two. Oh my God. I mean, this episode is a lot about Sandoval and also about Sheena, which is why Rachel Raquel made the video on her um Instagram, because as much as Sheena was saying in the after show, oh, people are going to get sick of her talking about Sandoval, 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 Sandoval. Rachel Raquel was like, but hold on, Sheena, all you talk about is Sandoval. And I was like, oh, my God, Rachel. I mean, that's that's kind of true. I mean, everyone's profiting off of that. Everyone on the cast is definitely profiting off of the Scandoval situation for sure, for sure. And when Rachel Raquel said that, I was like, I mean, she's not wrong. <laughs> Shout out to Sheena, but she's she's definitely not wrong. Um, they're all talking about it. And, you know, it's it's a kind of thing where I, I want them to talk about it. And after the fact, I went to all the podcasts to kind of look for this information because we were wanting so much more because the affair broke um, when the season was wrapped. They went in and had... Um, did some production after the season. So we got some bonus episodes and content, but we wanted, we were kind of left with Rachel Raquel crying and admitting at the third part of the Vanderpump reunion, like Tom basically is all I have. And he's alienated me from everyone. And he told me I couldn't tell the truth. And I feel like so lonely. And we we're like, Oh, and we just wanted to hear more, I think from everyone. And that's why people are, have been, you know, looking forward to the season, I wish it there wouldn't have been such a, a large 
time frame. I realize production stuff, but look what you guys did with only a couple of weeks with that production when you had to go back in um, after Scandival broke. So I think there was so much time and the paparazzi and everything is so on this story that we got a lot of answers through the podcasts and the paparazzi and the media. So this season, um, I mean, we're only going into the fourth episode tonight. I know some people are already writing off this season completely. I'm not ready to do that at all. Uh, I still am interested in Vanderpump Rules. I know a lot of people have been asking themselves if they're still interested in all this. And I can see people getting tired of it because how much can you actually listen to Tom Sandoval before you literally want to stab your eyes out? Um, but yeah, I will say that I'm I'm still invested in Vanderpump Rules and uh, what we're going to see. I don't know if I'm going to like what we're going to see because I think... What we talked about previously, it's a lot of villainizing Ariana, villainizing Katie, trying to make the Toms happen. The Toms aren't going to happen. The Toms are villains. Okay. We don't need to villainize anyone else. They're good with being villains. They got great edits for a long time. They're showing their whole asses and just let them do that and let us, you know, let us have our opinions. We don't have to like the Toms. I don't like everyone I watch on television. Now, Tom, Sandy, but I mean, he's a special kind of dislike because like you guys said, he makes it impossible to root for him. He is just the freaking worst. He just makes it impossible with every interview he does with his victimhood, with his men, uh, weaponizing his mental health. Horrible. Thank you. Chicken head PK Neely for the first super chat of the live, the whole Tom, please. Can we after Rachel, the whole Tom, please. Can we after Rachel? I don't know what that means. Chicken head. Um, let me know what you meant by that. I'm sorry. I'm not the whole Tom, please. Can we after Rachel, um, or Tom coming after Rachel? Because this latest episode of Rachel Goes Rogue definitely gives us um, more insight into the situation from Rachel's perspective, but we see more about Tom and and uh, just how manipulative she believed after going to her therapy, whatever it was that Tom was. So we're going to listen to most of it, you know, do some fair use commentary, see uh, what we think about what Rachel has to say. And uh, then we'll also check out the Tom Sandoval New York Times. <sighs> oh, my God. Um, uh, New York Magazine, I think it was, featured him, which you know for a alleged narcissist, even though Dr. Drew says he's not, that is going to feed his ego so big. And I am not okay with it. Um, I understand. Yes. Yeah, some people are struggling to be engaged with VPR. I've heard a lot of that, but, um, we'll see you guys. I mean, we'll see. We're just going to have fun with it. We're going to roast it. We're going to recap it, but I understand. I understand what you have to say. Uh, what you guys are saying, uh, Kirsten says Tom pulled the classic narcissistic, narcissistic move of don't break up with me or on alive myself, which is so crazy because we have been hearing. So Rachel shares that we're going to hear this as we go over the podcast. Um, we, Tom is now wanting us to show ultimate sympathy, empathy for his mental health situation. But all we've seen Tom Sandy, but do is, um, out the women in his life being Rachel Raquel and Ariana out their mental health statuses, share things he should not share that are none of his business to be sharing about their mental health and also weaponizing their mental health against people, which is, is not his job to do. And it's so inappropriate. And it's so gross. And, but now we're supposed to believe that now we're supposed to be like, Oh, Tom, poor Tom, Tom wanted to hurt himself. It's like, no, Tom wanted to hurt everyone around him, which is what he did. So cuckoo crazy that this guy is now asking, you know, trying to absolve himself of any guilt and be like, it was so hard for me, Lisa, and scream at Lisa Vanderpump when we realized that he was outing information about Rachel Raquel's mental health status on the show to the media. Also, Ariana's using that as an excuse why he couldn't be with Ariana and why he couldn't leave Ariana. So the thing that Tom said Ariana did, which was uh, possibly hurt herself if he left her, he was actually doing to Rachel Raquel. I mean, pff, projection, projection. This guy is the king. The only thing he's the king of is projection and Dalulu, Dalulu delusion. Thank you, Chickenhead PK Neely for the super chat, his New York Times article. You may have to do an extra article or you may have to do an, an extra live. Okay. 
I see what you're saying. Thank you, Chicken Head Artist. Thank you so much for the super chat. Hello, hello, hello. Hopefully you're having a wonderful, wonderful day. All right, let me get situated here, you guys. I'm gonna play, I did make a little commercial break. I'm gonna play my uh, commercial break, blow my nose, and we'll get right into it. No, No, whoa, the rain didn't mean a thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the rain didn't mean a thing. Stop! Just stop! Yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. When I judge you, you will know it. Wow. That was better. No. Women's stories matter. Yeah. Yeah. Right. They just matter. Yeah. 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 It sounds uh, a little pretentious. You know what the word pretentious means? Mm -hmm. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, better. That is disgusting. I that is disgusting. I'm not the one that started disgusting. it. I'm telling you what I heard. Disgusting. It is disgusting, isn't disgusting. it? Disgusting. Disgusting. Yes. disgusting. Whoa, 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 whoa. Diamonds. New furniture. Oh, no, you don't, princess. Stop filming. Whoa, 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 whoa. The ring didn't mean a thing. No. Whoa, 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 whoa. What are you, out of your mind? No, I need the, the ring didn't mean a thing to you. Okay. Ring didn't. Get up here with my voice. Ring didn't mean a thing. To you. One more time. Ring didn't mean a thing to you. What are you, an idiot? The ring didn't mean again. The ring didn't mean. The ring didn't mean a thing to you. Millions of Americans suffer from psychological disorders and are not getting the proper care. Now you tell me what's so funny about that. Now you tell me what's so funny about that. Okay, I'll be making little commercial break edits. I thought that would be a fun thing when I either have to uh, step away or pull something up on my computer and uh, we can have a good old time with those. I had fun with that one. It was longer, but uh, StreamYard was like, uh-uh, you can't do that, Jolene. And I was like, why not? I was like, you just can't. We just won't let ya. So hopefully you guys liked it. Smash the like. All right. <laughs> more edits like that I'll post to my channel as well as long as NBC 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 Universal doesn't strike me all right so um Rachel Raquel starts this episode uh if you want to go listen to the whole thing I'm gonna speed it up we're probably gonna skip through it it's only like 39 minutes and that's with ads so it's it's not bad at all um, but you can go check it out wherever you find podcasts. And, uh, if you want to support Rachel Raquel on her podcast journey with Rachel goes rogue. So this is episode 10 talking about her and she's not even there. Rachel Raquel starts this episode telling us how some people were like, Rachel, you said you weren't going to talk about the show. You weren't going to go over the episodes. And Rachel is like, okay, you guys, maybe a long said that I wasn't going to, but I was. Okay, the episodes that I mentioned in with Lala, I'm going to talk about, okay? And I didn't always like my voice, but I do now. And if Lala can have a podcast, then I can have a podcast too. So she's basically just saying, you know, you guys, I know that I said I wasn't going to cover, or this isn't going to be like a recap VPR podcast, but it's about me. And when it's about me, we're going to talk about it. I don't even care if it's a recap podcast. Like, just call it what it is. Who cares? Girl, like, if you want to recap some episodes or you want to, you know, I mean, not that we need another Bravo person recapping, but if you want to give us some insider insight, go ahead, girl. Go ahead. With a la la. la, la. Okay. So let's, uh, I sped this up. Hopefully it's not too fast. And we'll take a listen to Rachel Raquel, episode 10. I'm like in the mix still because people keep talking about me and it's, it does affect me. <sighs> this was a really heavy episode for me to watch episode three of Vanderpump Rules. It was a lot. I wasn't expecting for some of these topics to be talked about in the way that they were. It really took me off guard and I really couldn't sleep. My mind was racing and I just 
you know, I had so much to say and I had to remind myself, like, it's going to be okay. Like I, I have this opportunity on my own podcast to speak whatever's in my heart and whatever's on my mind in a true authentic way. So I'm very grateful. Awesome. Awesome. True, authentic. Let's skip ahead a little bit. We got it. Thank you for your affirmations. A few of the articles that have been out there and about Tom saying you cut him off. It was all about optics. He feels abandoned. Okay. So this person talking is her publicist. Her audio is trash. I don't understand how these people can have a whole podcast through iHeart and have trash audio. I don't understand how people with money who are on TV, who have support behind them, how can I get okay audio? And I'm nobody and you guys have all these engineers and people helping you and you can't get it together so that when you're interviewing someone, the audio isn't trash. Anyways, I digress. This is her publicist talking and she's like asking her about how Tom Sandoval is saying that Rachel Raquel broke up with him because of the optics, the optics, the optical illusions and the publicist. And also that I guess he claimed that the her publicist told her to break up with him. And the public is like, oh, hell no. He makes a really big deal about you not texting him on his birthday. What was that timeline? And why didn't you reach out? OK, so I feel like there's two things to address in that question. The first is the optic statement. And he said this, if I recall correctly, he said it during the after show. He said, Rachel's publicist kept saying optics, optics, optics. and. I've actually never heard my publicist say optics before. That's more of a Tom Sandoval phrase. In fact, when we were caught lying about the jacuzzi incident and Lisa was asking him about it and he wanted to come up with a story to cover up for it, he kept saying, look, it's not good optics for you to be over at my house in the jacuzzi. So optics, optics, optics. That is definitely something that Tom Sandoval would say. So the reason why I didn't reach out to him, we officially stopped communication when he went to special forces and I was encouraging him to go because that would allow for me to have more of a clear mind. And this was towards the end of my treatment. Um, this was after I received that friendship lamp and the note. So I decided, Oh, I forgot. She received, Oh God. He sent her a lamp according to Ariana in the after show where they could like Morris code each other. Like, Beep, 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 beep. I love you. Or they could like change colors and it would say things like they're 10. Oh my God. Like they're in the babysitter's club. We got a job. Say hello to your friends. Babysitter's club. Uh, yeah. So wherever she is in the world and wherever he is, we can communicate through a lamp. I don't know. I stranger things did it better. It's creepy. Creepy Tom. Tom, you're too old for that. Tom is 57 and he's doing this shit. You guys. It's crazy. I wasn't going to contact him again. And I think he was expecting for me to reach out because I got out of the Meadows July 3rd. And his birthday, I believe, is July 7th. So I love that she's like, I don't really know when his birthday is. When you have sex with someone, Lala, Lala said, You don't know when his birthday is, but Lala, when you have sex with someone, you don't have sex with their birthday, you have sex with their dick. He was expecting Lala. for me to reach out to him. I didn't reach out to him and he was not too thrilled about that. I have some things to say about that. How was this claiming optics were important? Because first and foremost, um, him saying you dumped him because I told you to do so for any reason. It's actually taking the power away from you, which is a decision that he made. Oh, that's very interesting. Her publicist, first of all, is like, first of all, him saying that you broke up with him because of optics, because of me, your publicist saying it is wrong. Also, Rachel, it's him taking away your power again. Ooh, that is an actual interesting statement because instead of Rachel, like the publicist is saying, saying in the treatment center or the spa, wherever she was uh, in Arizona, instead of her coming to that through therapy or through her own mind, la la, Tom is like, uh oh, anyone can tell Rachel what to do. I know I did through a lamp through my wiener, and now the publicist is. So that's interesting, and I don't disagree because he is manipulative like that. And Rachel isn't hard to manipulate. Yeah, so I think that is first a really big deal because that was your choice and your power when you came into your own more so through treatment. And secondly, what was there for me to be concerned with about the optics? Basically, you had an anxiety breakdown on the show for millions to see. You were outed, having an intimate moment to the world, and humiliated, being filmed without your permission. You were exposed to having an affair despite apologizing multiple times. 
you were so bullied, berated, dehumanized, berated by a group of people that had cheated with each other. Okay, let's not get ahead of ourselves. I mean, I understand that. Oh, good. Um, Mallory, I love your comment. Um, Esther says she said along with the lamp, he said he sent a letter trying to convince her to leave the facility. She realized he didn't actually care about her, yada, yada. And she knew then she needed to cut him off. Oh, my gosh. Yes, Tom infantilizes. Is that how you say that? Infantilizes Rachel. He does. He he would change her diaper if he could, you guys. He would love to do that. Oh, my goodness. Yes, yes, yes. Um, Lala is right. Tom is dangerous. He's dangerous. I don't know if Lala's going to keep that energy, but yeah. Um, Chell, my husband's in the chat. He picked up stuff from my P.O. box. Looks like I got two presents. Thank you, guys. Friends, marry people, everything else. Oh, I didn't want this. What When we say dehumanize, we've heard this from Bethany. We've heard it from Rachel Raquel. I feel like it's a narrative they're really trying to push. Honey, baby doll, you're not dehumanized if people just drag you for filth. If you do something really shitty and people after the fact are like, I think they're talking about the cast and at the reunion, no one was dehumanized. You know, this news had just come out. Ariana was very hurt. They're all hurt. They're all acting out against things that you did. People are going to have reactions, all right? No one dehumanized you. I think we need to look up these terms and see when people are very, are actually dehumanized in, in situations. This is just you getting dragged. You got dragged a little bit. You know, people said stuff about you. Your cast said stuff. They had opinions about what you did. You and Tom didn't take their feelings into account uh, when you did what you did. And they reacted to that. So I don't know about dehumanizing. All right. I mean, you, you got to watch like a foreign documentary or something. You got to get IFC uh, <laughs> to really see some shit. These people need to travel more. They need to do something because no one was dehumanized. Nobody. Kirsten, 100%. Kirsten says Tom wants the women in his life to rely on him to bring them up rather than themselves. Mm -hmm. He wants to raise a lady friend. That's what he wants to do. He wants, he doesn't want anyone who's more successful or smarter than him. He hates that. People have to dumb themselves down to date, Tom. Even Rachel. It's crazy. Into an inpatient center for three months to do the work. And the bullying didn't stop. They purposefully cast out that you were getting treatment. They were called a liar on cast podcasts. They told the world you were a spot. The cast, the network, none of them would tell the truth that they knew. Despite me showing them proof and begging them to post where you actually were. I asked Okay, so the publicist is pissed. Her audio sucks. I apologize on her behalf. Um, is pissed because she feels like the network wouldn't push uh, the information they wanted, which is that Rachel was allegedly at a real treatment facility. And they allowed the narrative to be that she was at the spa. But I think we looked it up. And I think it had some treatment, but I think it had spa qualities too. So they feel as though... Um, Rachel, they just allowed people to say that Rachel really wasn't at a treatment facility, if you will. And the publicist is mad about that. She big man. To support you for getting help and to stop the hate. I told them that you had death threats. And I will say, there's a point of this I agree with because I think e Rachel at least stepped away. At least she did something other than something that was completely self-serving in a negative way. I mean, obviously this is all self-serving, you know, but I mean, bettering herself, if in fact that's what she did, um, then that is going to, you know, benefit other people. Um, because, you know, the the saying, I always get it wrong, but when you, you know, when you don't heal your wounds, you're going to just bleed on other people who don't deserve it. And um, that's what Tom did. Tom decided to head out and do a karaoke tour with his band, and he can't sing. He decided to make jokes about it on stage and get drunk and, you know, uh, hook up and do God knows what. He was on a self-serving mission. He ditched his friend, Tom Schwartz, in the bar. He ditched responsibility. He said, I got a feed these kids. And we're like, Tom, you don't have any kids. You don't have no one to feed. You don't even take care of the dog. We see how Maya looks at you. Always trust how a dog looks at someone. All right. That dog looks at you like you're a damn fool because she knows because dogs are smart. They're better than us. All right. Maya's like, mm, get me out of here. She can't wait until you finally leave that house. She hates you. You know, you were banging Rachel Raquel when your other dog passed away. And don't get me started on the cat. She wishes she could scratch your eyes out when you're sleeping. All right. So no, 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 no. Tom, I I like what Rachel did in this situation much more than Tom Sandy. But Tom Sandy was just like 
Thank you. Thank you, Robert. The band is a vanity tour. It's a vanity tour. You're not talented in music. You can't sing. You're not good at this stuff. Your band has to make up for it with actually knowing how to play instruments and things. And that woman in the band who has a really good voice, but you shouldn't be the lead singer of a band. You're only that because you have this show behind you and you can bring an audience. And unfortunately these talented musicians that work with you, they can't pull an audience because they don't have a brand like you do already set up and that. So, I mean, slow your roll, slow your ego. Uh, you did this because you wanted to be around more women with your shirt off, with your stanky body, allegedly. Remember everything I say is alleged everything. However, is true, except for the parts that are false. Um, Tom, you didn't need to pay no bills. Give me a break. How much you think we believe that your karaoke band is making you money to pay your bills? No, sir. You're going into more debt. You have to pay all your bandmates. You're practically giving away tickets. No one wants to see you saying, I mean, yeah, right side. Nobody wants that. Nobody, nobody. Come on. Come on. Mm -mm. People at your concerts have to get so drunk. They forget where they're at. All right. People were just there to get video clips. It's not a fun time, Tom. Don't lie to us, Tom. Okay. I watched what happened live, if you remember. Andy uh, asked the cast members where they thought you were, when they knew exactly where you were. Mm -hmm. You were damaged and broken when you went in there. And thank goodness you got to help and did the work. Yeah. Because it could have been a very different outcome for you. Yeah. Right? So at the end of the day, I was concerned with the truth. We always put out the truth. We put the truth to the press. We put the truth out to the public, to the network. We always stood for the truth. And my only concern at that point was for you to get better. What about this? So I have a question for you. I know you were encouraging the network to say that I was actually at a treatment facility and not at a spa. Is there a reason why you didn't release a statement saying that I was at a treatment facility on your own to get that out there? We did. We actually, if, if you recall, we'll do so two part. The reason how they could have done it was not only just in a statement, remember all the mediums they have, whether it's EE News, whether it's, you know, the Bravo sites, all I did was ask them to re-put our statement out there. We had already put the statement when the person that left the Meadows how did you? Yeah, that's when we had to put the scene around. Thank you, Dana Marie. She saw him for free. Yes. Bands like this, acts like this. I'm a, I've been a traveling performer, traveling comedian for years and years and years. Okay. If you, a lot of times you are giving away free tickets. You know, if you're not a household name, if you're not really talented, I mean, you're not making, hi, hi, man, husband, chill. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sweetie. Yeah. Oh, I do. Oh, my goodness. Thank you, dogs and husband. Uh, you're not going to be pulling in, making the the big bucks as a touring act when, first of all, you're not good at that thing, um, which is Tom, um, or you, you know, you're just, he's not known for being a singer. He's known for being a reality star. He'd probably get more people out to drink with him at a bar than he is to be um, singing. You know, that's like me. I have to know where I'm at in the stage of my comedy and my standup to know what what kind of venue I can actually play and possibly sell out or sell tickets to and what kind I can't. So a lot of times I'm probably going to have to, you know, do a, Hey, you guys want a BOGO to come see me? We're going to offer some free tickets. We're going to do promo. We're going to do a lot of things, but you got to drop your ego, sir. You're not making a living off this, not the kind of living that pays your lifestyle. Maybe the kind of living that pays. I don't even think the kind of living that pays my lifestyle. So no, you're not, you're losing money on this deal. Let's not, Let's not kid ourselves. So Rachel and her publicist are talking again about how the network wouldn't put out the statement that Rachel wanted or that Rachel was really in therapy. Yeah, so and that's, you know, I've been doing this for 24 years and never have I put a statement out and then been like called a liar. And then especially about something so serious, right? It's not about an opinion. It's not about running. It's not about who's dating who or who's breaking up with who. This was, you know, a, a very serious situation um but they refused to put it out there and they perpetuated yeah the spa thing yeah so the spa thing overtook any of our statements i think we even requested for bravo to tell the cast members who were going on the podcast every week saying that they know for a fact that i'm at a spa to stop saying that and they said we don't have any power over the cast to prevent them from saying whatever they want on their podcasts so lisa claims that it was shocking and, and triggering for her and, uh, because of her history with mental health and her brother and now her concern for Tom. How did that make you feel to see her react to him? I feel like Lisa has extended her resources to Tom more than I've ever seen that extended to me and that concern True. for me. And so 
I'm not surprised by it because I feel like it's pretty typical for Lisa to really like take the men under her wing and make sure that the men are okay, but she doesn't really care about the women on the show as much. Like to me, my perception of it, it seems like the women are more disposable to her. And she has invested in the Tom Tom name and has business with Sandoval. So Rachel, have you been listening to me? Rachel, are you watching the lives? Because I mean, that's 100% true, right? JDB says, truth about LVP. We know this about LVP. LVP has a lot of internalized misogyny. She needs to work out on her own. It shouldn't be done on television. We've seen her do this time after time, year after year. She's much harder on the women. She's probably of that uh, belief that, you know, oh, men, they're just... Oh, they just, uh, they mature so much slower. You know, they just, you have to treat them. You should know better, darling. Men are going to do that. Boys will be boys. That's the the feel that Lisa Vanderpump gives us. And it's very, very unfortunate. But it does explain why the Toms, you know, or partially explain why the Toms got such a great edit for so many years. And while the women, like the Katie Maloney's and stuff, um, were, uh, weren't, given that same edit or Kristen, if you see how Lisa reacts to like Kristen Doty in the past compared to like James Kennedy or pair compared to the Toms or compared to any of the guys that worked there, it's very, very, very different. And we've seen that uh, with Lisa, she's got a special soft spot for these Tom losers. She just does. I mean, Schwartz, who is like, a literal man, baby. She just, they almost have like a flirtatious relationship, which was weird. And Sandoval, who, you know, she, she like 2% tried to hold him accountable and then accountable and then immediately pulled back when he started, you know, sassing her. And I'm like, she would not take that from one of the ladies. She would not put up with that. Okay. Uh, Kaya D says uh, she's a toxic male apologizer. Can't believe it. She really is. In a lot of ways, she really is. Uh, and we've just seen this season after season and we overlooked it until you know we couldn't overlook it anymore it's like oh god it was annoying but now it's really annoying because we're seeing the blatant difference in how she is treating the men and we see how the men even dumbass sandy butt is able to use his mental health and weaponize it and manipulate her with it due to the loss of um unfortunately her brother you know so uh, rachel is not necessarily wrong about that that's for sure yeah it's like okay if you were really concerned about tom having dark thoughts like you had to have considered my mental state of mind as well because we were both going through the same thing at the same time but did she ever reach out to you no she didn't and she didn't care what my mental state was when she pulled that whole graham situation on me. As a producer on the show, do you think that she had a responsibility to treat you and Tom equally when it came to mental health support? Well, I feel like Lisa does have a responsibility and, and production does have a responsibility to treat the cast equally when it comes to caring for their mental health. And you can't like preach that and then only apply it to one person or pick and choose who you're going to extend that care to. Yeah. So I don't think that, that was right. And if you sat down with her today, what would you have to say to her? I would ask her why she felt the need to lie and say that I surrendered my dog at a kill shelter and put that in the press. I would say, what was your intention in doing that? What Has Rachel proven to us that it was in the kill shelter? I, I know we covered this in the past and she gave it to, she gave it back to like a golden doodle ranch. Um, she gave uh, formerly the dog formerly known as Graham, now Hippie, back to this. And I believe they contacted Lisa Vanderpump through the microchip and got a hold of Vanderpump dogs and she grabbed the dog. Um, I don't know, but I, I'm kind of of the belief that like any, a lot of these shelters, eventually if you're going to give up your animal, your family member for what seems like, nah not the best reason in my opinion. Um, and you didn't do the things you needed to do as a dog mom. Um, they, they have the, there's a chance that they won't make it out or they won't be adopted. They won't be rehomed and they could be hurt. Now I understand that she did, but what she was supposed to do, I thought was to give the dog back to Vanderpump dogs. 
So I don't know. This is just what Rachel says. And I can't necessarily believe what Rachel says. I need to see proof that this dog rescue is actually a no kill, that this is what you were supposed to do. Because I'm going to trust as much as Lisa Vanderpump's got her internalized, um, you know, misogyny when it comes to animals, Lisa Vanderpump saves these animals. And I am forever grateful to people like that. The things that she does to help, um, dogs especially is amazing. So uh, I'm going to believe Lisa over Rachel on that one. Was Hippie, a.k.a. Graham, used as a plot point for the season by production? Probably. Probably. Um, but the dog was a part of the show. You know, so that's on you, Rachel. That's on you that you didn't provide, you and James, you and James, you didn't provide a safe home for Hippie. It seems like he didn't have the training and the tools, according to your other cast members too, with his behavior. There was a lot of disruption in his life. I feel for this dog. I feel for this dog more than I feel for any of these damn people. Any of them. Gigi, thank you for the super chat. And Jennifer, thank you for the super sticker. Appreciate uh you guys very much very much okay let's keep going to make me the ultimate villain so you could save your precious tom sandoval but the thing that actually in that scene the thing that bothered me the most was tom talking about the podcast that sheena had nima on and when i saw that clip i immediately was like why did he need to bring this up if he knew how much that affected my mental well-being why would he bring it up on national television for everybody to know about. And it's been months and months and months since that episode came out on Sheena's podcast. And so people have forgotten about it. But now that you're bringing it up on camera, addressing these rumors that impacted me so horribly, I just felt like it was like, what the hell? Like, that's messed up for you to do. Like, I really, I don't know what his thought process was because his point was that Sheena has been vindictive and bringing our name, dragging it through the mud and it's affected him. But the example he gave was something that she said about me. So I just felt like that was very unnecessary. Why did Sheena need to go into all the details? Why did Nima need to go into all the details? Like I could just picture it. Sheena's very upset, obviously about the TRO and she was hyping up all mutual friends to talk about me and divulge personal stories. So I'm sure Nima was hyped up and in this state of like, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to put it all out there. The point of the podcast, which I didn't listen to until yesterday, um, because that, when I found out about it, it put me in such a dark place. I just wanted to push it. Okay. I listened to the Nima episode. It was quite a while ago. I do remember it was like confirmation that Rachel Raquel said, um, that Tom and Ariana had open relationship, which is the information Sheena brought to the bonus episodes of last season when she was like a friend of mine told, said that Tom, that Rachel told her that Tom said during Coachella that him and Ariana are in an open relationship. And Rachel saying, no, I did not in fact say that. Nima, I told Nima that it appeared. So what Rachel is going to tell us is that it appeared they might be in an open relationship because at Coachella, uh, the year before Scandival or that Coachella before they started their affair, allegedly they weren't hooking up. They were in a hot tub together until like six in the morning and they're putting their feet in there or something. And they're with their friend, Jesse. Their friend, Jesse is the one that they've been recently sharing the Go, uh, GoFundMe. I think he had some like brain tumors. He had some big health issue and I think he's doing good now. Um, and he's out of his surgeries and things. And he was featured in this last episode last week as the server at the table serving uh, Kyle Chan ugh, and Tom Sandy butt. And he started crying. He's like, you put me in a really awkward position. And now I'm like, oh, Jesse was around for some stuff. What did Jesse think of all this? You know? And uh, he cried last episode. I was like, oh my God, Jesse is showing more emotion over this than Tom Sandy, but has interesting. And it seemed more real than Tom Sandy, but as well. So Rachel said they, the three of them stayed up talking about relationships and love till like six in the morning and had their toes in the hot tub. And, um, she told Nima that both Tom and Ariana that weekend, that Coachella weekend, were being very friendly with her, very loving on her. And so she got the vibe that maybe they'd be open to, you know, 
I don't know, uh, sharing. I'm not sure. Something like that. And she also told Nima that she got the feeling that Tom Sandy Butt would, would be interested in making a move on her. So this is Coachella's what, April? So this is April. Their affair allegedly started that July. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, I, and I think Nima might have talked about their hookups or something on Sheena's podcast. I don't know. But listen, she said, I didn't listen to it. Well, you probably should listen to it so you know to be upset or not. Don't just go by what people tell you. Listen to the actual thing. So she was very upset about this Nima interview. And that was the catalyst for her being like, I don't want to do this show anymore. I'm done with this because her mom called her and her mom was like, hey, Rach, it's me, mom, the one the dog bit, allegedly. I don't know. Anyways, uh, yeah, Nima is on Sheena's podcast and she, he is talking about your sex. You had sex together. And she was like, oh, my God. And that's what Tom used the last episode to tell Sheena. What you, the interview with uh, Nima, that put Rachel over the edge. She wanted to hurt herself. So, again, He's divulging information about Rachel Raquel's mental health that he should not be divulging, similar to how he divulged information about Ariana's mental health, which he should never have said. Um, and he's using that as a manipulation tactic. He's using that for production. He's using that just in the grossest way possible. And I agree with Rachel in this sense that he shouldn't have brought it up because if he really cared about Rachel, he wouldn't have brought it up. He wouldn't have, because at this point he says, I love her. I stopped drinking for her. Okay. And, uh, but yet you bring this really painful thing up. I would have kept it off the show. Um, for sure. If I really cared about the person, if I knew it was something that drove them to the point of possible self-harm, I wouldn't talk about it, but he was raring to go to bring it up. So this dude don't care. He cares about the storyline. He cares about getting any kind of pity or victimhood. And he also cares about looking like the prince, looking like he's saving the day. We've seen this with Tom. Tom loves to fight women, you know, and then sometimes he'll say, I'm fighting this woman for another woman, which is what he did uh, with Rachel Raquel all last season and the season before. Uh, well, yeah, mostly the season before, too. Um Going after Lala and Katie being like, Rachel's the best. Similar to what he did with Schwartz saying he's a better wife, you know. Oh, my goodness. So this Nima thing, who cares? I, I don't remember the episode being that memorable. Um, I think I did a video about it, but she's big mad at this. Out a few times. Uh, and, we were and she talks about how she was surprised that Nima would even do an interview on Sheena's because when she did an interview on Sheena's podcast talking about the date her and Nima had went on um, before Scandival broke, he was like, I am a serious businessman. You cannot talk about my dating. And I'm like, um, weren't you on the Shaza Sunset? How serious could you be? <laughs> Give me a break, dude. Okay. So they went on some dates. Sheena wanted to hook them up and was like, hey, maybe you could date Nima and then Hannah Burner's wedding. We can all go to Hannah Burner's wedding to that gray haired comedian guy. It'd be awesome. Double dates. For that to come into fruition. And then she's like using it against me to say that I'm some type of promiscuous woman. And then they're like, we got an advertisement. Hi, it's Rachel Raquel. And I just want to tell you guys about skinny tea. It'll make you shit your pants. And my mental health is better. Okay. So in the actual episode. James and Sandoval have a heated conversation about betrayal, and it seems like he's still very hurt by Sandoval's actions. Do you find it odd that he's seemingly in a relationship where he claims to be the happiest he's ever been, but yet still he feels betrayed by Sandoval? Um, yeah, I mean, is he the happiest he's ever been? That's only for him to say, but um, yeah, I, I think he was just kind of throwing that in my face to make me feel bad when he said that he's the happiest he's ever been. Oh, she's the love of my life. James looked up to Tom as someone he admired. And Tom was there for him when James was always the underdog and really encouraged James to be a part of filming, even though their friendship wasn't like a close friendship, but James admired Tom. And he didn't think that Tom would be capable of doing this. And James and I were engaged. So yeah, I can see how it's a betrayal. I think 
maybe comparing James to Ariana, it doesn't quite equate, even though the dynamics are similar. It's interesting. Yeah. Do you think that James's anger has less to do with you and more to do with his own friendship? I think it has less to do with me because I remember. So in these questions about James and his anger towards Sandy Butt and the affair, it's interesting because Rachel kind of goes back and forth. She has this like laugh and almost uh, I would if I was Allie, I'd be like, I wouldn't like uh, her tone in this somewhere. She's like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, why is James still talking about it? He's probably obsessed with me. But then she goes on to say, well, I think it had more less to do with me and more to do with their friendship. And I kind of believe that because I think that what we saw in past seasons of um, Vanderpump is Tom Sandoval really prided himself in being an advocate for James. But really, it just boosted Sandoval's own ego. And he was able to take these moments to kind of lecture James and like a little brother. And James, you got to get your shit together. Not including him. Such a good guy. Look what a good guy I am. So it gave him camera time. It made him look like he actually cared about James. We all know he didn't really care about James because a friend you care about, you wouldn't do this to with their ex fiance on the low. And, you know, um, you just that that wouldn't happen. So interesting that um, that Rachel kind of has a bit of clarity about it, but then f falls back into it. it's probably because he's like still in love with me and la la and him cheated, you know. But um, I don't think anything Tom Sandy but ever did for James or any kind of big brother friendship was ever um, truly out of any kind of selflessness. It was all very selfish. James was going to, when they first met, I think they were going to, get together with like a band and we all know james actually is much more musically inclined than tom sandoval is and remember the trumpet incident oh my god uh tooting his own horn but toot toot that shit sucked it was horrible and um after that it just gave tom sandoval a way to not have to focus on anything in his life because he was going to be James Savior. He was going to get James on the up and up. He was the guy that James could go to. You should be like me, James. Uh, I'll help you, James. And uh, that, I mean, we all saw that happen. I mean, that's that's not a surprise there. So interesting that Rachel goes back and forth on this, but I mean, that's kind of what she does. I don't know if she really knows what she's saying half the time. I, I don't know if it aired or not, but I remember filming where he called me and I picked up and he said, I'm less mad at you and I'm more mad at Tom. I think James's anger had more to do with his friendship with Tom and his his idea of who Tom really was. And since that perception was shattered, I think he was perhaps like grieving that friendship. Yeah. How long ago was, did your relationship with James end? It ended December 2021. Because do you find it at all odd that he still does get so angry and charged up to when he's talking about you? Because I think even as a viewer, once people come in and say, is he just not over her? Or, or is it just that he, Tom had, had you and he didn't get that point or something strange there? I think James is just an angry person. Like things will, will rub him the wrong way and he'll take things very personally. So, I mean, it doesn't really surprise me. I've seen him angry a lot. And then his reaction in the episode versus on Watch What Happens Live and that calmness he had on the, on the after show. Is that interesting too? Yeah. Um... Not really, because he kind of lives in his own world. I think the anger came up in that moment for him and he expressed it. And now that it's been months later, he's like, he doesn't really care as much. And that's what we see on his most recent appearance on Watch What Happens Live. I do want to talk about, though, like, I do think it's interesting that Tom is holding the Kristen thing over James's head, yet Tom has gone out of his way to help plan James's proposal to me and like drop money on that. And I think a lot of people are confused by that too. A lot of people suspect that Tom and I were seeing each other while James and I were together. That is false. I asked Tom about- uh, uh, mm, 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 mm. Do you see the weird pause? Let's put it in real time. Let's take the speed off. I don't trust anything you and Tom say about the timeline of your relationship. That was a weird pause, Rachel Raquel. Okay, let's listen again proposal to me and like drop money on that and I think a lot of people are confused by that too a 
lot of people suspect that Tom and I were seeing each other while James and I were together. That is false. I asked Tom about why he was so invested emotionally. Okay. I mean, it's not, mm, I don't know. I don't know. I still, the way she told the Coachella story too, um, if you listen to the whole podcast, uh, it just seemed a little sus. I think some shit was going down. The fact that you told Nima um, that you think Tom would make a move. If you were such good friends with Ariana, why wouldn't you say something to Ariana? Or why wouldn't you feel more uncomfortable? Why are you out there telling a random dude you're dating? Oh yeah, Tom, why are you gossiping about them to this Nima dude going, yeah, I mean, I think Tom would like me. And I think like, okay, like Lala thinks she's hot, but it's really me because Ariana and Tom well, like, I think they have an open relationship because Tom, I think he wants on this. You know, you think she would say something to Sheena, one of her friends. That's what girlfriends usually do, unless they um, already took the opportunity to dip their pool or dip their pool, <laughs> dip themselves into that pool, being the Sandoval pool, or they want to keep that option open and they like the idea. So, okay, Rachel, we see you, Rachel. We see. Okay, let me speed it up a little bit because it's just like ooh, so slow. And financially and James's proposal to me. And he said that it was because of the show that he felt like because we were in a COVID season and there wasn't a lot going on that he felt if he put money down to make this extravagant thing, it would look great for cameras and it would contribute to the overall success of the show. How did that make you feel you're not? So she said, I asked him, why did you pay for my um, engagement to James? Why would you do that? Is it because you liked me this whole time? And he was like, no, it's because we're in like COVID and like, um, I want like the show to be like good. So I, I think it'll be good for like the show overall. So she says that Tom is very invested in the show and it is like truly a part of him. And um, that's uh, that made sense to her because, uh, you know, she said that seemed like something that he would do. <sighs> Which, I mean, he's not good with money. We know that about him. He still, pay your mom back, Tom. Uh, we know that. So it doesn't surprise me that he would do something like the Raquella, Rachella, and um, want to look like the hero and the nice guy and then go, Ariana, this is secretly for you. So, mm. you know, it was interesting because even I was questioning him. I was like, so were you into me back then because you did contribute so much and he was like no 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 it wasn't like that it was just for the show and i was like okay so this guy really cares about the success of the show and taking a step back and looking at it now i can see how the show is like his higher power and it controls a lot the show is his god oh my god of his decisions in life <laughs> Back to the advertisements. Hi, it's Rachel and Calv. You guys always wanted to learn to read. I know I have. So Hooked on Phonics oh, on. worked did. a little bit for me. How do you feel watching that back? Seeing him defend you at the moment. Do you feel that was sincere? I was actually... Was saying... Okay, so on the episode, Sheena had a conversation with Tom back at the restaurant. And he brought up the podcast guest, Nima. Mm -hmm. And it appeared that he had your back. He was mm -hmm. saying that... It should have been more about the comment about the open relationship rather than him going into all the detail mm -hmm. he did. How do you feel watching that back, seeing him defend you at the moment? Do you feel that was sincere? I was actually happy that he was defending me in that moment because what he said was accurate. That when I found out about that podcast that Sheena recorded with Nima, I was in the meadows and my mom told me about it. And she's like, hey... I, just want you I can't believe her mom called her like you guys are saying in the uh, in the comments in the chat and you know she's in alleged treatment to get help from dating this asshole and having sex with her friends life partners and drinking too much and just making bad decisions overall and possibly you know processing other things from her life her mom's like hey Rachel, yeah it's mom oh my god they're talking about your vagina in great detail on <laughs> Sheena's podcast why would you tell her that that's not gonna help her that is so counterproductive to what's actually going on. Were you really in treatment or were you out there needing to, what was she going to reply to all this? I mean, it just seems 
totally gross. Yvonne says Tom was grooming Rachel with this. Interesting. Yep. And Gina, oh, I, I kind of agree with Gina. Oh, here is that um, when Ra Rachella, Raquella, whatever they called it, happened that season, that was after Jax left and Tom wanted to prove and show that they didn't need Jax or Stassi or Kristen. And Tom was the number one guy. So he wanted the proposal to be epic. I could see him doing that purely for his ego, purely um, to prove that, you know, he was better than them. And so I do uh, agree with that. Yeah. Her mom seems like a total stage mom, chronic cat. How sick. I can't imagine Nana. My mom would have just went to wherever they were and punched the guy in the face. She really would have. She wouldn't have told me. I know she wouldn't have. So Rachel Raquel, unfortunately, seems to be surrounded by people who really do not have her best interest at heart, which is, is unfortunate. This podcast and talked about. Oh, so this is vindictive. <laughs> yeah, possibly he's trying to get back at me for painting him in a bad light which I don't think it was about. He was for that and encouraging me to speak on it. I didn't think that I said anything bad, but he was like, you, you know, like I'm a business professional and people are. So that's when Nima was like, oh, you shouldn't have done that interview with Rachel Raquel. So Rachel or with Sheena. So Rachel Raquel is like thinking maybe um, this was to get back at her for the interview she did when they first went on a date, which I think is a little bit of a stretch. Um, I mean, Sheena brought this topic up on on the um, show, her and Nima, Sheena and Nima have a history. I, I don't know. Looking at me and when they hear things like this, it, it looks bad on me. So he was scolding me for opening up about that dating situation and how it went down. Um, so this is vindictive. <laughs> yeah, possibly he's trying to get back at me for painting him in a bad light, which I don't think it was a bad light. I thought it was also very interesting that Nima said on Sheena's podcast that people need to lay off Tom Sandoval and that he's going through a lot right now. And you can't, you know, people are talking about mental health this, mental health that, yet they're like going in on Tom Sandoval. And we really have to think about how this is affecting his well being. But Rachel, let's get into it. Let's tear this. Girl, welcome to the patriarchy. Welcome. We've been waiting for you. Of course, it's a double standard. We know that. Unfortunately, with men and women, when a cheating situation, the woman gets the scarlet letter and the man we're more worried about. Boys will be boys. You're on a show where it's clear that the men's wants and needs and mental health are much more um taken into consideration than any of the women on the show. You know, we have yet to truly, just because Ariana puts out this very strong front doesn't mean she wasn't struggling and, and suffering despite getting all these deals. Her whole world was turned upside down. She was lied to by all of her friends. They basically, Tom didn't just cheat on her. He tried to humiliate her and he tried to create her as the villain while having an affair with one of her best friends. Him and Schwartz actively participated in a campaign to paint her as a bad person and a villain to possibly replace Ariana uh, with Rachel Raquel and replace Katie Maloney with this new Joe person that we're going to see in tonight's episode. So these men, it was a very calculated effort. We saw them talking so poorly about Ariana and this is while they both knew that this affair was going on while Tom was actively in this affair, you know, but no one's worried about Ariana's because she's putting on a strong front, but that's got to be hella painful to see. You can give me all the Duracell deals and all that stuff, but it's still going to be hurtful and it's going to be embarrassing and it's going to be, I'm going to have so many feelings around this and the loss of a relationship where we shared a home. We were partners for 10 years. I went and did my, my eggies. I scrambled my eggies for you. Uh, I'm going to feel some type of way, but we're so concerned about this man who created this whole problem and never took anyone else's feelings into concern. So I just don't give a shit about Tom Sandy Butt's mental health when he didn't give a shit about anyone else's mental health around him. But Rachel waking up to the fact that like, oh, they'll just drag a woman. Yeah, honey, go watch the Barbie movie. That's how it is. Welcome, welcome. All right. And as you get older, hopefully you'll get more and more clarity on this. And you'll see that you should always be in support of your female friends and the women around you. And you should build them up and you shouldn't be competitive with them. And you should not have sex with uh, 
<laughs> your friend's boyfriend and or husband because these dudes will drop you in a minute. It is the women, it is the uterus, it is the, the cervix of life that will lift you back up and give you life again. If you notice, Rachel Raquel isn't being lifted up by the men in her life. It's the women. Even if you go to her social media, she has girlfriends who still trust her. Okay. Um, and they're building her up and they're allowing her, you know, um, a place I imagine to be, uh, vulnerable and, and allowing her friendship. So, I mean, for the future, Rachel, don't do this again. Don't ever put a man before a woman. It is, it's not going to work out well for you in this situation. Tom Sandoval wants the vagine, all right? Ariana, your other friends, Sheena, they wanted the friendship. They wanted Rachel Raquel, all right? Whether you think Sheena, whoever is a good friend or not, hell of a better friend than Tom Sandy, but who the minute you stop giving the vagine and you stop being the young mistress, the young hot mistress who's feeding his midlife crisis will just throw you aside. And now he is going to paint you in a bad light, which he's already started doing. But he loved you. Okay. Up because she's not a human. Right. Did Nima ever reach out after that podcast or to date? Has he reached out? No. And then, in your opinion, do you think that Tom brought this stuff up on camera because it was his only chance to confront Sheena and defend you? Or was it self serving to clear his own name about a story he claims was false? It was self serving. It was self serving. Tom doesn't care about Rachel Raquel. He is just, no. He, it's, it's self-serving for him. It's a way for him to attack Sheena, for them to lo look like the victim. He thinks Rachel Raquel's coming back to the show. They're going to be in love. Uh, they're going to drink Coors Light, take mushrooms and play on their lamps together. You know, it's all self-serving. We've learned that about Tom Sandy, but it's so self-serving. The guy can barely string a sentence together. He's not looking at, you know, uh, other people's concern. He's looking purely at his own. Molly, thank you so much for the super sticker. Yes, Brianna, Utera unites. Okay, don't be that girl. Don't do it. The patriarchy loves when you do it, but don't do it. Interesting question. Um, I don't know. Like, was it to be spiteful to me because I didn't reach out to him on his birthday? And that's why he wanted to bring it up? Maybe. Uh, maybe it was like he really did want Sheena to know how it affected me. I didn't address it sooner because it's something that I already processed through, but it is not okay for somebody else to tell other people that they have expressed feelings of not wanting to live anymore. Tom already brought this up about me on Tamara and Teddy's podcast, Two Teas in a Pod. And that one, I really went in deep processing with my therapist because it was like, whoa, why are you talking about this personal information that was like privy to only your ears? Like this is a vulnerable topic, a vulnerable position for me to be sharing with you. And you're like telling Teddy and Tamara and whoever else is listening to this popular podcast that I have had dark thoughts. But the way that he said it too, he made it seem like- The thing is, the only one Rachel Raquel should be villainizing is Tom. No matter what Sheena did after the fact, uh, because of, you know, Rachel Raquel kind of breaking a friendship code and uh, being with Tom and, you know, despite of being so close to Ariana, uh, you should always be blaming Tom. Tom is the one key factor in this that you should just keep your anger toward. OK, Sheena can do a million podcasts and a million things. And the edit Rachel Raquel did was cute and funny. Sure, sure, sure. But in the end, it's all Tom. All right. Just keep keep your eyes on the prize, Rachel Raquel. We had a suicide pact like it was some. Oh, Romeo. yeah. She was saying Tom made it seem like they had like a like a uh, S. I don't even, you're not supposed to say that on YouTube. So some S pact where they were going to um, like Romeo and Juliet. Yes, ma'am. How do you not think that this dude, I mean, his emotional intelligence stopped in the ninth grade, which is when you usually read Romeo and Juliet in your English class. OK, so that is when that's introduced to you. And he's like, that sounds good. But he didn't finish it and realize they both die at the end, you know. Um, so he's like, well, like uh, I saw the Leo version of Romeo and Juliet with Claire Danes and it was so hot in the 90s. Rachel, you weren't born yet, but it was like freaking amazing. It was so good. And uh, yeah, so Leo killed it as Shakespeare. Was he Shakespeare? Was he a Montague? Montague? Or was he a, a Capulet? Well, which, which was he? <laughs> no! 
I defy you, stars! <laughs> Juliet! Which is really effed up. Thank you, Molly, for becoming a member. Welcome. I love your sweet kitty and your pick. Personal information that was like privy to only your ears. Like this is a vulnerable. Yeah, he's always going to share information if it suits him, if it makes him look better. He'll weaponize his own mental health, your mental health. Like, I don't care. Well, topic, a vulnerable position for me to be sharing with you. And you're like telling Teddy and Tamara and whoever else is listening to this popular podcast that I have had dark thoughts. But the way that he said it too, he made it seem like we had a suicide pact. Like it was some Romeo and Juliet love story. Ugh, like, oh, that was, that really angered me. So when he uh, it, listening to the two of them talk about their relationship, I know why they why they had so much in common. They literally talk like angsty teenagers. They're both like, Ugh. they have a lot of trouble communicating their feelings, their emotions. I mean, the girl is making pukey sounds. Ugh, oh my god, it was like so gnarly, gross. It was a cringe fest, brah. I said it again, and I understand. Like, yes, he was defending me to Sheena and exposing for her for how vindictive she really was. But it's also not okay to be discussing that personal, emotional turmoil state of mind with the rest of the world. And now it's a topic of conversation. That really crossed a boundary. Let me ask you this because the root of this is this conversation about the open relationship. Yes. I did not tell Nima that Tom told me that he was in an open relationship. What I told Nima when I was <sighs> explaining to him. Girl, we don't really believe you. We don't really believe that. Okay. Oh, I love the Baz Luhrmann. Uh, <laughs> Claire Danes and Leo. Um, Romeo and Juliet, 1996. Beautiful. Ew, gross. Ugh, gag me with a spoon. Never. Gross. Would never. Great point. Someone brought up in the chat that what kind of therapy lets you listen to podcasts? It seems like she was very plugged into the everything people were saying about her, which is probably extremely unhealthy. Um, even now, probably very unhealthy. Experience at Coachella staying with Tom and Ariana and a few of our friends in that Airbnb. Tom and I and Jesse were in the jacuzzi, our feet were in the jacuzzi and we were talking until 5 a.m. The sun was coming up and we were listening to Dua Lipa and talking about relationships and whatnot. Leave Dua Lipa out of this. Oh my God, she does not want to be involved. And nothing happened that weekend, but also like Tom. Wait, wait, wait. Again, we have to listen to the way she says this stuff. Nothing happened that weekend. So was it the next weekend? Because that's what it sounds like, Rachel. Okay, let's turn it back 15 seconds. Just the way. No, I mean, so Coachella is that's April, girl. You guys say you didn't hook up till the summer for the first time. When will the truth finally come out, Rachel? Release yourself from the hold of the man's white nails. Tell us the truth. Your feet were in the jacuzzi and we were talking until 5 a.m. The sun was coming up and we were listening to Dua Lipa and talking about relationships and whatnot. And nothing happened that weekend. But also, like, Tom and Ariana were extra lovey towards me. The sun was coming up and we were listening to Dua Lipa and talking about relationships and whatnot. And nothing happened that weekend, but also- You don't seem too sure about that. Nothing happened that weekend. Is that a question? That's not like a question, Rachel. Oh my gosh. Thank you, Vanessa. Hello, Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Okay. First of all, immediately my mind goes to, why does 50-year-old Tom Sandoval have time when he has a whole ass life partner and home? Uh, how does he have time to be up until 6 a.m.? You should be in bed with your lady friend. Someone at his big ass age um, in a relationship that's allegedly not an open relationship should not be in the hot tub till 6 a.m. Grow up, Tom. Tom, put the shrooms down. You got to work on a 401k, sir. You got to pay your mom back. You got to get right with the bar you opened. You have a lot of responsibilities to take care of. It seems like you just want to, my Tom wants to party all the time, party all the time, party all the time. Tom, it's showing. It's showing on you, Tom. You can't, you don't want to be, I mean, you're already the old guy, the old guy at the club. Okay. You can find me in the club. You're like, you play some fitty. They're like, what are you talking about? Oh man, take a look at your life.
It's really bad. It's really, really bad. So my mind goes there. What is he doing in the hot tub till 6 a.m.? I would have checked his ass so hard. I've been like, where have you been? Where have you been, old man? Get in bed. No, we're not talking about relationship. What are you out there talking about relationships till 6 a.m.? And it's drunken talk. It's Coors Light mushroom talk. I'm like, you guys ever think about like what it would be like if you like looked at someone else's vagina that wasn't your significant other? I don't know. I'm just like deep thought. Let's just try it. Let's see what happens. Dude, <laughs> this guy, he's the freaking worst. He's the worst. So they're listening to Zua Lipa. They're talking about relations. Oh, some things are happening. And she says Tom and Ariana were very friendly with her. Like Tom and Ariana were extra lovey towards me. And so. When I Girl, that's the Molly. That's the Molly. You just start rubbing each other. Like that's, that's the drugs. Well, Nima, this experience, what I said was Tom and Ariana give off an open relationship vibe. And he was like, oh, that's interesting. Do you think they're in an open relationship? And I was like, no, I don't think that they are. But it's it was a weird energy. And he said, do you think Tom is interested in... What was... I would love to know what the conversation was that made her tell Nima. Nima isn't even really friends. He's friends with Sheena, but I don't think he was friends with Tom and Ariana. So why are you bringing this up to a guy you're casually dating, hoping that he takes you to Hannah Burner's wedding? Very interesting that she's just like, by the way, um, Tom, I think Tom Sandoval, like, Lala doesn't think so, but I think that he wants to hook up with me and they might have open relationship. But at Coachella, they were being really, really friendly with me. Like, why are you bringing this up? It's just, it's, it's interesting that this conversation just like came up with Nima. <laughs> I mean, my God. I, don't, I mean, maybe I'm thinking too much of it. Um, but Steven says straight up, just the mice just come out. Miley Cyrus already told us about this. Come on. You like that. And I was like, yeah, it felt like he was. And then he said, would you act on that? And I said, no. I would be more likely to hook up with Ariana than I would with Tom. That's what I said. Okay, cool, bisexual LA lady. No, no, don't try to, don't try to get out of this with some like, mm, I'm a cool girl hooked up. No, mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> and so, you know, and that was that when he relayed that information to Sheena. I guess he took it as I was saying that Tom told me that he and Ariana were in an open relationship, and that was not the case. He did not tell me that. And it's interesting, too, because Sheena confronted me about it. She asked me, like, hey, I heard from somebody that you told them that Tom said he, they were in an open relationship. And I was like, no, I never said that. And she's like, well, this person is a trusted source, and they told me that you did. And I was like, well, I didn't. Who is this person? And maybe that would help me understand where this is coming from. And she refused to tell me who it was. And so I was like, okay, like I'm leaving it because it's not true. That was maybe in January of 2023. What? Seems like she waited a while to let that one out the bag, right? Well, she let that out the bag when we were picked up for filming. <laughs> the publicist is trying to help Rachel like, wow, looks like Sheena really waited a long time. If this allegedly happened around Coachella and she waited to the whole next year in January, she waited a long time to let the information out. Rachel's like, no, she, she brought it up. Like you would say, yes, yeah, she did, which seems a little sus, but no, Rachel's like, yeah, she brought it up. No, she, she t like, okay, Lala was there and she said that. It, what do you, what do you mean? Rachel has no idea. <laughs> the producer's trying to like hand her softballs and she's like, oh, it keeps hitting me in the nose. True. That was maybe in January of 2023. Seems like she waited a while to let that one out the bag, right? Well, she let that out the bag when we were picked up for... Well, she let that out the bag when we were picked up for filming. So... Oh, I guess yeah. That's thank you. That's true. She does. She has no idea what the Bill producer tried or what the and that her publicist tried to do for her. That was the rumor that she wanted to address to have Nima on because it seemed like she was protecting 
This person, Nemo was trying to clear his name. Sheena was trying to clear her name. And you got dragged in now. Yes. So time is oh yeah, it's like painful sometimes. When I have it sped up, it doesn't seem as painful. And then when I put it in the actual like how, you know, how it was spoken. I'm like, oh my God, this is, this is a struggle bus for her to communicate these things that happened in her life. These very basic things. Jill, thank you so much for the super sticker. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Conversation isn't Rachel's strong suit, Miss T. Thank you, Jill, Christine. I appreciate that. It said that he's in a better place about it all now. Where do you stand? It's hard to say where I stand just because I wasn't expecting to address Sheena's podcast with Nima on and having the, that be brought up in this season. And because like, that is what led me to my darkest thoughts. It was really difficult for me to hear that and know that I was being hit with that. Now I didn't listen to the podcast when I got out. And so I didn't hear it until yesterday and it was hurtful. I think my brain really went to like the worst case scenario. And that's when I was like, I quit. I don't want to do this anymore. I just hope that we're holding Nima accountable and we're holding Sheena accountable. For what? For what? For discussing your sexual exploits that you discuss and show on the television show you're on? What are we holding them accountable for? What are we holding them accountable for? I mean, you were the first one to run and kind of kiss and tell. I, why? She's not your friend no more. <laughs> why do we have to hold them accountable? Nope. Just focus on Tom, girl. Just focus on Tom. For two different things. I think it shows a lot about a person if there's somebody who kisses and tells. Okay, first of all, you can't say what shows a lot about a person in the situation you're in. It's going to take you a while and a couple more spa treatments before you're able to give people advice. On that. It says a lot about a person what you and Tom did. All right. That's what it says a lot about. Oh, Rachel. Oh, Rachel. And I don't know why someone would want to date somebody like that. A. B. With Sheena. I hope that this brings to light how vindictive she was this past summer. Oh, God. <laughs> Rachel, I on the prize, Rach. Remember this guy? Remember this guy who like embarrassed you and recorded you without your consent when you were doing fingerlings to yourself on a FaceTime video that Ariana had to find in his phone? Remember that guy with the creepy mustache that probably stinks? Stinks like garbage. Just gonna let Tom off the hook. You're like, I don't know who would date Nima. Who cares? He's old news. You, you like, you boned him a couple times. Big deal. And Sheena, she's mad at you. She hit you. You're mad that she hit you. You guys' friendship fell apart. I, 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 girl, no, no. Just spill some secrets on Sheena if you want. <laughs> I don't know. You're all using this as content now. So you, you can't sit up there on like a on your high horse and uh. Tell us, you know, it says a lot about people when they can do a podcast and say things that you said to them in confidence and then not say the right thing, even though you already knew that that information was out there because Sheena asked you in January 2023. And it just says a lot about him, but not about me. And hi, Susie. It was relentless. Aloha. Tom was not exaggerating how vindictive Sheena was. Okay. I'll be the first to call out Sheena when Sheena does like, but how is Sheena being vindictive in this part? I think Sheena's reactions to Ariana recently are a little weird, but how is this vindictive? You guys blew up the whole <laughs> cast. You gave them fodder and things to talk about. Um, and she's talking about how is this vindictive? What is she doing that's vindictive? She made a song, kind of a banger, the Apple song. Uh, she profited off of it. Yeah, that might, you might be mad. I think you're just mad she punched you. But again, she can't make a fist. So it was, you know, it was a lot of nail, a lot of thumb. All right. You know, that Jill, that's what her and Tom Sandoval have in, in common is that they both, uh, you know, trouble communicating and they both are perpetual victims. 
Okay, so let's take that for a minute. And you, we, you filed the TRO. Me too, Layla. You didn't want to ultimately hurt her, so you took it back down. Yeah. But now, okay. you mentioned you regretted it because you had a long-term interest at heart. But yeah. now, looking back at how she continued to act, how, do you still feel that was the right decision to let go? Or how do you feel about that? I don't think it was the right decision to let it go. I think by going through with it and holding her accountable, I would be standing by what I believed was right and wrong. And it's recognized in the court of law. So do you feel by Sheena bringing on her podcast episode with Nina onto the show, that it was sort of her redemption or to prove that she was right, vindicating herself because she really couldn't after the assault. So this gave her sort of another angle to clear her name or give herself credit. Yeah, I think people were questioning whether or not she knew about Tom and I. And if she was sitting on information where Tom told me and I told Nima that Tom said he was in an open relationship, then it's like, oh, well, why didn't you say this sooner? So I think she was really trying to clear her name with the friend group and like, hey, like I didn't say that, somebody else did, it's Nima and he's gonna clear it up for all of us. Oh, who cares about so Nima? I think she was trying to rehab her image. So this one's kind of going back to the episode too. Billy Lee said you abandoned. Okay, oh, so much to process there. What the fuck was she talking about? <laughs> like the minute she says it, I'm like, oh, okay. And then I just completely forget <laughs> NYC and P. Thank you so much. I could never listen to this without Jolene's humor and the, those memes. Okay. So she regrets. First, she says she regrets putting the temporary RO on Sheena. So then she takes it away and she's like, forgive me. And now she says she regrets pulling it and she wishes she would have kept the TRO and went forward with it when Sheena went to court she would have showed up and they wouldn't have just thrown it out because through a court of law she had a case <sighs> then why didn't you just keep it why didn't uh, you're so back and forth Rachel this is ridiculous at this point if Sheena punched you in the face even though she can't make a fist you guys all know she can only do this um then you should have kept going with it I don't know I don't <laughs> But now she's like, I did stop because I felt bad. And now I don't feel bad. We got to have some emotional control here. We got to have some emotional maturity. We got to be able to, you know, pick a lane and stay in it. It's got to be our lane. You can't take up all the lanes. Otherwise, where's everyone else going to drive? I mean, it is. She's mad. She's mad at because she thought taking away. Here's what I think. She thought taking away the TRO was going to get her closer to a possible maybe reconciliation with Sheena or them being softer on her and not talking to her about her so much. It didn't. They all still were dragging Rachel Raquel. She didn't like that. So she's heard about that. And she's like, I shouldn't have kept that on her. She's so mean. She's like five feet tall and I'm like six feet tall. And but like Lala is like as tall as me, but she didn't even hit me, but Sheena did. It was like being abused by a troll doll. It was horrible because I love the trolls movie and I can't watch it the same now because I just think of Sheena doing this and it just like hurts. And my phone broke and it's iPhones are really expensive. And my mom had to get me a new one and it was like so bad. Okay. Tom, do you feel like you did? Um, a little bit. Yeah, I do. But you know, I've been advised that that would be the best way for me to end it because if I tried to explain the reasons why I'm breaking up with him, he would figure out a way to get back into my good graces. I mean, I even tried to break up with him before he went on special forces and I said like, I don't want to do this anymore. This isn't healthy for me. And he was like, please don't do this to me. Please don't do this to me. And then he started talking about how Kyle Chan had to come over and remove the guns <gasps> from his house. Oh my, not Kyle Chan. He just makes jewelry. He shouldn't be touching weapons. He just makes jewelry and takes them to Tiger King places. 
wow, Tom, this is so interesting. The fact that you said Ariana did this, but really it was you. It was you, Tom. You were manipulating her with your emotions. You were weaponizing your mental health against her. You were like, don't bring on me, Rachel. I'm going to come back for special forces. I'll be a better guy. I got so many G-U-N-S's. Oh, my God. Why does Tom even have a G-U-N-S? Okay, or G-U-N. Um, why? Why does he have weaponry? He's like the kind of guy that should have a very dull sword that he accidentally stabs himself in the dick with. That's the only kind of weapon he should have. Why does this man, who can't get through a sentence without using like five times, have a... I'm scared. I'm scared for America. I'm terrified. This, this is the kind of people... We don't want guns in the hands of men like this. Very fragile, weak victim men should not have weapons. And how dare you? How dare you do that to her? And be like, oh my God, Kyle Chan had to take all my guns. And he made me a friendship bracelet on the way out. And we drank some Coors Light. We did some shrooms. And then we rubbed each other's back with baby oil. And then we got in the hot tub. And then we talked about what a bitch Ariana is. And then we both put our mouths on the penis flute. And then he had to take my guns. Oh my God. Right? Thank you. OJ. Fancy OJ. And the survey says OJ. He shouldn't have the pew pews. He shouldn't have the pow pows and the pew pews. No. no don't you have to pass like a test? I don't even, I'm not even sure he can write his name. Pay your mom back, Tom. You don't need guns. You need financial security and responsibility. Oh my God. So he, she was like, I had to wait for him to go on special forces where he continued his victim tour to break up with him because he said he was going to hurt himself. If I just wasn't with him, Tom, get it together. You are 76 years old. Before he went on special forces and I said like, I don't want to do this anymore. This isn't healthy for me. And he was like, please don't do this to me. Please don't do this to me. And then he started talking about how Kyle Chan had to come over and remove the guns from his house. And I was like, oh my God, you know, like, please don't choose a permanent solution to temporary problem. Like now. Rachel Raquel giving him a meme answer. Oh, Tom, please don't use a permanent solution to a temporary problem. Yes. I heard that one. I saw it on Instagram. I'm talking him off the ledge. And so, you know, like after he did that, it was like, well, I don't, you know, he's going to pull something to keep me in his grasp. So, yeah, I just had to ghost him. Okay, so when you cut him off. I love that she ghosted him, but I'm also afraid for her. Because we know how well that goes. The anger he has towards women is unlike anything we've seen. Uh, I mean, we've seen it before, but um, possibly, probably the worst one of the worst we've seen on Bravo, because he's just that cis male, according to him. The new thing is that, you know, as a cis male... Um, Did you say cis? Is your voice yelled, do whatever you feel entitled to do. But as a cis... As a straight male, if I was a woman, I could do that. If I was a gay male, I could do that. But as a straight male, if I raise my voice, it's wrong. Remember that argument he had with Ariana? He was just so mad that he couldn't yell at women. If I was gay, I could. If I was, like, trans, I could. But since I'm just, like, a cyst of a male, I can't yell at women. That's all I want to do. He has victim blamed me 100% of the way. So I don't believe anything that just came out of his mouth. I think he's f***ing full of shit. And he can f*** off. Yeah. I agree, Ariana. Thank you for putting that so poetically. I love that she ghosted him, but yeah, I'm, I'm worried. I'm worried. Yeah, very narcissistic. It's so crazy. Dr. Drew, I don't know. We should maybe look into, uh, should you have that medical license still, Dr. Drew? Um, because you were so quick to be like, oh, no, he's not a narcissist. Do you know all the details, Dr. Drew, before you were on his podcast, absolving him of this? Hmm. Then, now, how does it feel seeing him in the confessionals and things he has to say? <laughs> Ugh. Um, yeah, I her publicist says, how does it feel seeing him in the confessionals now saying all this stuff? She's like, Ugh, gross, ewy, pew, pew, yuck. I don't enjoy seeing it. And I think as the season progresses, we'll see. I predict 
that we will see him turn on me once he really realizes yeah, that I'm he not is, back. girl. We've kind of seen him in the after show, kind of giving me jabs, giving you jabs, saying that it was all for optics and that's all I really care about. I'm like, if that's not projection, I don't know what is, okay? So do you think up to this point in the show, the things he's saying, he's thinking, oh, she's going to be back and we're going to be together? Yeah, absolutely. He was bringing all of this up on camera preparing for me to come back. And I think maybe that was manipulative and knowing that I'm going to have to address these things in my confessionals and in real life conversations. And that, you know, he was this hero for standing up for me. And, you know, I would have been mad at him for bringing it up in the first place, but he would have like really swooped in and sold me on like how he was really there for me when nobody else was. And um, yeah, I think it was strategic. Oh man, I feel like this. All right, so that's the end um, of uh, the Rachel Raquel podcast. Um, yeah, uh, it's good that she says she has an understanding of just how manipulative this guy is and just how what he will do, <laughs> similar to like an abusive guy, he will um, isolate you and then uh, while being the one who isolated you, then make you feel like, he's all you have and he's your hero and he's going to save you. I can be your hero, baby. All the while continuing to um, just manipulate and take advantage of you. And, you know, Tom Sandy, Butt has been looking for a victim for a while. We don't know how many victims he allegedly has out there, but Rachel Raquel was like a perfect one for him, not absolving her of her behavior at all, but he needed someone that he could uh, manipulate a lot easier than Ariana, which clearly he couldn't, um, which caused an unbalance in the relationship. And he just, you know, she was so mean to me. Why? Because you say stupid shit and she calls you out on it. That's what like a good partner should do. They should want better out of you than wanting to yell at women um, on a TV show. But there we are. Thank you, chicken head PK Neely. So he blamed Ariana for the thoughts. And now he's also blaming Rachel. Mm, he is a cis male. He really is. Thank you for the super chat on that one. Wow. Uh, oh, goodness. Rachel Raquel, Rachel Raquel. I do love that she ghosted him. I hope this stays. Um, however, he is going to continue to, we will see him paint Rachel Raquel in a bad light. I mean, he made his, uh, her treatment, he made it a part of his storyline for his sub alleged sobriety, which I don't think ever really happened, um, in my opinion. Uh it's just, it's so unfortunate. <laughs> this guy still has access to do this to women and anyone who would date him. And he's done like no work on himself. Um, and if you watch the Nick Vile podcast, which I did roast and recap, um, I'll link it at the end of this video after the video post, but you can check it out. Um, it, it told you everything you needed to know. This man has progressed none. He's still the victim. He's a big baby. He literally has gotten worse, and I didn't think that was possible. But for him, it really is. It really is. Okay, so let's get into this New York Times Magazine article, which I'm sure just, like, feeds this man's um, uh, alleged narcissism. No matter what Dr. Drew says, something's going on here with this dude, okay? And he got... I don't know if it's a cover story, but too much attention, too much attention. Um, NYCNP, thank you so much for the super chat. Uh, NE1, oh, anyone, I get it. Anyone notice Tom's new AI GF changed her tone? Oh, what do you mean? What does that mean? Is that that new girl? You're talking about the new girl, NYC? Let me know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you, Fancy. Thank you so much. All right. So let me share this oh good i saw i woke up to the scene i was like oh no why did they do this all right so new york times magazine there he is that's the bathroom of tom tom because i took myself white man husband shell and shout out to andrew gabor we all went there um re right after scandal broke and uh i wanted to check out shorts and sandy see if there was any tom we wanted to be on the lookout so we went to shorts and sandy's i took video and a picture of the bathroom so the lighting in the restroom so there he is looking at himself the dude loves himself I, 
it should be hard for you to look in the mirror for him. It is very easy for him. So the article is called How Tom Sandoval Became the Most Hated Man in America. He turned last year's season of Vanderpump Rules into the best reality in reality TV's history and ruined his life in the process. Uh, all right. So this is by um, Irina Alexander. Uh wrote this and is oh today published yeah came out this morning again i didn't see it unfortunately but i haven't read it uh valley village is a los angeles neighborhood just across the freeway from studio city near the southern edge of the area locally referred to with both affection and derision uh as the valley there at the end of a quiet leafy street of ranch style homes and what real estate agents have come to describe as a modern farmhouse like rachel cow would say Ugh. Um, which its current occupant, the reality TV star Tom Sandoval, has outfitted with landscaping lights that rotate in a spectrum of colors, mimicking the dance floor of a nightclub grow up home. The home is both his private residence and occasional TV set for the Bravo reality show, Vanderpump Rules. After a series of events that came to be known as Sandoval, paparazzi had been camped outside, but by the new year, it was just one or two guys, and now they have all mostly gone to yeah, because no one's that invested, Tom. We all want to see Ariana thrive, and we want you to just kind of go away, go get some help, fix yourself. But the more you keep doing these dumb interviews, the more you know people are just gonna they're gonna laugh, Tom. They're gonna laugh. Okay. Scandoval is the nickname for Sandoval's affair with another cast member, which he had behind the backs of the show's producers and his girlfriend of nine years. This wouldn't be interesting or noteworthy, except that in 2023, after being on air for 10 seasons, Vanderpump was nominated for an Emmy for Outstanding Unstructured Reality Program, an honor that has never been bestowed on any of the network's Housewives shows. Ooh, you know, the Housewives are like, oof. Why didn't we ever get this? Okay. I mean, at least maybe some of like the berserkers could have been nominated. Um, I feel like Nini somewhere along in the Roa uh, version uh, should have been nominated. There were, there were some housewives that I think could have been nominated. It also became by a key metric, the most watched cable series in the advertiser beloved demographic 18 to 49. Cause you know, after that you're dead to them. After 49, they're like, who cares? Who cares? <laughs> and brought in over 12.2 million viewers. This happened last spring when Hollywood's TV writers went on strike and cable TV was declared dead. Oh, RIP cable TV. And our culture had already become so fractured that it was rare for anything, let alone an episode of television, to become a national event. And yet, you probably heard about Scandaval, even if you couldn't care less about who these people are exactly. The story has continued off screen. After the season aired, Rachel Raquel Savannah Levis, with whom Sandoval had the affair, entered a mental health facility in Arizona. There you go, Rachel. Someone is finally calling it a mental health facility. It's the New York Times magazine. I mean, it's not the New York Times. It's the New York Times magazine. So there's like a slight asterisk, but that's, that's a pretty big deal. So she entered a mental health facility in Arizona and started going by a different name, Rachel. Ariana Maddox, Sandoval's now ex-girlfriend, garnered so much national sympathy that she has had the most prosperous year of her career. In addition to being invited to the White House Correspondents' Dinner and to compete on Dancing with the Stars, she landed ads with Duracell batteries, Bic razors, Uber Eats, Lay's potato chips, as well as starring a uh, starring role in Chicago on Broadway this winter. Sandoval, meanwhile, became the most reviled man in America and the butt of a million jokes. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Yes. <laughs> you still are. <laughs> you make it too easy. Jennifer Lawrence made fun of his skin. Oh, oh, is this the dehumanization they talk about? How's dehumanizing? Amy Schumer called him a narcissist. <gasps> One of the hosts of The View called him the Donald Trump of ex-boyfriends. That's good. That's good. Was that Joy? Who said that? Who said that? Portia Williams. And Sandoval has been here in the Valley trying to process it all. No, he hasn't. Do your research. New York Times Magazine. I got a journalism degree too. Okay. Allegedly. Um, he has not been in the Valley trying to, he was on tour with his karaoke bands. He was doing karaoke, drinking heavily, partying, 
So please, you're lying. You're lying. No, I'm not you're lying. lying. Okay, and we can show you, as uh, Heather from Salt Lake City says, we can show you receipts of that. Receipts, proof, timeline, screenshots, f***ing everything. Screenshots, effing everything. We can show it all. We can do it. We can do it. Okay. Uh, I feel like I got more hate than Danny Masters, <laughs> he told me. And he's a convicted rapast. We have to say it like that or YouTube will strike us. Okay. Mm, I don't know if that's true, sir. Oh, but okay. Okay. Naimam. When I arrived at his house late last year, Sandoval, who was 41, you better double check on that too. You better look into that because I'm pretty sure he is 61, ma'am. But he lied. He lied to you, okay? So Tom Sandoval, who is 61, had just finished working out, of course, in the gym he made. He wore a black muscle shirt with a wide headband. His assistant, Miles, oh, R.I.P. Anne, was at the dining room table sorting through Sandoval's utility bills on two laptops. How come every man around him needs so many laptops? He basically does nothing I don't personally have to do, Sandoval explained. Oh, wait, no. He basically does anything. I don't personally have to do. Okay. Sandoval explained. We were also joined by Riley, who's on Sandoval's new publicity team. Ooh, Riley, which has a background in crisis PR. I assumed Riley would be an impediment, but my fears were put to rest when she didn't flinch at the Danny Masterson comment. Riley is 23. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Tom, you are no offense to 23 year olds, but <laughs> she don't even know who Danny Masterson is. Your PR. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Your. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Your crisis PR person is 23. I was still in college at 23. I'm sure she's great. Riley, shout out to you. Did you get the intern? Is that all you could afford, Tom? Tom, you can't, a 23 year old, you know, he got that. I know 23 is great. Jada, enjoy the age. I loved being 23, but the shit box he's in, he needs experience. He needs life experience. He needs, no, of course, 23 year old rally is like, that sounds good. Like, yeah, slay Tom, slay. You're slaying. You're total. You're slipping. Slay Tom. Don't be cringe. Okay. Let's do it. Let's do it. Oh my God. He got a baby to be his PR person. Riley is 23. She's watched Vanderpump since she was in middle school and seemed as interested in Sandoval's life as I was. Oh, no. He's going to groom another. Riley, stay away from his penis. Riley, it's old. He has old balls. Not to age shame. I have old balls, too. Riley, stay away. He could be your grandfather, Riley. Please stop. Don't do it. Oh, God. So Riley's 23, watched Vanderpump since she was in middle school and seemed as interested in Sandoval's life as I was when Sandoval described how, despite their gnarly nationally televised split, he and Maddox have continued living together, sequestered in separate parts of the five-bedroom home and communicating via assistance. Riley was curious to hear more. Riley doesn't even know what's going on. She's like, oh, Tommy, I didn't know about that. Tell me more. Tell me more. So Riley wanted to know more. So Oliver's stuff is still here, really? Where did you find her? You can't just hire people from bars and people you're trying to date, Tom. She does. She's your crisis PR, but she doesn't know that the ex-girlfriend that you cheated on that caused the crisis PR still lives in the home with you. Riley's like, so all her stuff is still here? Oh my God, is this where you live? Oh my God, it smells like my grandpa. It does. Do you drink Insure? I'm just asking because my great grandpa did. Yeah, you remind me of him. Oh, slay, slay, king, slay. Sandoval wasn't sure, <laughs> but he thought Maddox might have finally rented a place. She took the dog and the cat. Oh, oh my God. Thank you so much. I am so happy that Ariana took the dog away from him and the cat. When he had a party over there, I'm like, oh, these people are going to let the dog. I was going to get hit by a car. Like I was so worried. Oh my God. Uh, Erica Jane might not give a fuck, but anyone else about anyone else but herself, but I only give a fuck about the animals. I am so glad they're out of there. I don't give a about anybody else but me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't give a fuck about anyone else but the dogs and the cat. All right. 
So Ariana took the dog and the cat, thank goodness. And I know she wouldn't do that if she was just staying somewhere temporarily. So Ariana's renting a place. Mazel, good for you, girl. He said, Sandoval wanted to buy out her share of the home, but interest rates are so crazy right now. He was considering getting a roommate. Oh my, sir, you're too old. You're too old. You No, to help with the mortgage. If you can't afford the home, don't live in it. You're going to get a roommate when you're 80. That's called a nursing home. Stop it, Tom. Stop it. All right. So he was going to get a roommate to help with the mortgage. I thought you could afford it, Tom. At least he thought Maddox was finally open to the idea. It took her a while to not be spiteful about the house. Stop, Tom. Don't use any SP words unless it's Sprite. And that's it. You can't. No. Mm -mm. A month after we met, Maddox sued Sandoval in Los Angeles County to force him to sell the home and divide the proceeds. I love that for her. Sell the home, Tom. I don't think Ariana's being petty. I think you're being petty. Why can't you sell the home? All right. Why do you want to stay there? Get a new start. You can't afford it. You cannot afford it. All right. Um, my tape recorder wasn't on yet and Sandoval wanted to make sure I was getting everything. Do you want to like record this? Did he, he asked the New York times magazine reporter far more educated than he guarantee it's not her first rodeo. He said, do you want to like record this? Are you going to like, remember this? It's not like she's taking your order at the restaurant. Even then don't, don't talk to the servers like that. So, I mean, I have had servers that remember long ass orders and I'm like, oh my God, that's amazing. Are you sure you don't want to write this down? He probably says that to people. Oh my God, this man. Of course I wanted to record this. I couldn't remember interviewing a public finger, figure as eager to speak into a recording device. <laughs> Tom, you are getting dragged already in this. I love this lady. She said, I couldn't remember interviewing a public figure as eager to speak into a recording device. That welcomed a scandal, baby. Um, but then again, Sandoval is not a typical celebrity, nor is Vanderpump, which is currently airing its 11th season, your typical show. Early reality series like Big Brother, ooh, shout out to BB, and Survivor, woo, -hoo. rotated cast in every season. Shows like that, uh, shows that didn't, like The Hills, never lasted this long. The Hills lasted a good amount of time. Even its closest point of comparison, Bravo's Real Housewives franchise, is more of a weekly cage match in which bloodied fighters are retired once they're no longer useful. Hmm, nice little analogy there. And Sandoval, the Midwest, don't blame the Midwest. D no, justice for the Midwest. The Midwest bred son of a firefighter and a marketing executive is not a Kardashian, but he borrows money from his mom like one. Okay, he definitely does. Me too. I low-key love her too. What I mean is that although reality programming has been a dominant part of American culture for over two decades, we've never actually put a regular person on reality TV to live out much of their adult life and gotten to see what happens to them as a result. Contrary to a popular misconception, Vanderpump is not about Lisa Vanderpump, a former Bravo housewife. It started as a show about waiters and bartenders who lived in crappy apartments around Hollywood and for the most part wanted to be actors. That dream didn't work out but they became reality TV stars instead. For a while, this ruined the show. It became less honest. The cast still worked shifts at a restaurant, but actually they drove nice cars and bought $2 million homes. Mm. Once the show stopped pretending that nothing had changed, it turned out that a reality show about reality stars was not any less interesting. On the last season alone, there was Scandaball in which Sandoval, a reality star approaching middle age, <laughs> Girl, this middle age, even if he's 41, most men don't live to 82. He is full on middle age going through a midlife crisis, but that was sweet. He's going to hate that approaching middle age though, but that's middle age. It's middle of the road, Tom. Maybe end of the road, boys to men. We don't know. We don't know. Uh, proceeded to start a cover band. Oh God. It's a karaoke band. Open a bar and sleep with Levis, a former beauty queen. A couple that had been on the show since the first season finally decided to divorce, leading the wife to realize that she may never have kids. And a woman who once bragged that her private jet lifestyle was financed by Randall Emmett, the direct to video film producer. Oh my God, where has this woman been all our lives of Vanderpump? The direct to video film producer. Three years ago, Lala would have stabbed her over that comment. Now I bet she's loving it. 
left him and became a breadwinner as she fought for custody of their daughter. Alex Baskin, an executive producer of Vanderpump, developed it as a spinoff of The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, which featured uh, Vanderpump as the owner of several mediocre restaurants. <laughs> Not mediocre. Baskin noticed that Sir, which stands for Sexy Unique Restaurant, indeed had a sexy, unique atmosphere. In 2011, he sent a screenshot of Sir's website with Vanderpump on a throne surrounded by her good-looking staff, Andy Cohen, who was then Bravo's vice president for original programming. The network provided a small budget for Baskin to explore the idea. What Baskin found was an incestuous friend group in which everyone was either living or sleeping with one another, it was everything you look for in a TV show, Baskin told me. It just hit me in the face. The, the, the cocks just hit him in the face. All right? Um, all Jaxes, the Toms, it's all ready. At the time, Prestige TV was on the rise, and writers' rooms across Hollywood became overly preoccupied with uh, chasing critical approval rather than audiences and revenue. In this context, Vanderpump was an appealing alternative. Yes, it looked and acted like, a real, like reality TV, but at its core, it was more like the great scripted shows of the 90s. Oh, like friends? In that, or about the vampire ship, it was about a group of friends living life, dating one another, giving up uh, the hopes of their 20s for the realities of their 30s. It relied on time-tested screenwriting penance good, unexpected stories about original characters going through relatable cycles of jealousy, regret, insecurity, and longing. The show was also a brilliant premise. Uh, commercially speaking, the TV business uh, shepherded crowds to the real world business and vice versa. You could watch Sandoval and his friends on TV, then drop by and have him make you a pump teeny. The show's main draw was the cheating scandals, of which there were three by the end of the second season. Oh, good times. As the show took place more outside the restaurant, it went through an identity crisis. In 2020, it was further debilitated by the pandemic and the departure of four members of the cast because of past racial incidents and resurfaced social media posts. By season nine, there were rumors that Vanderpump was on the brink of cancellation. We were hobbling, Baskin told me. The very next season, Scandaval dropped into Bravo's lap. The show producers treated it like a news story. Late on the evening of March 1st, 2023, when principal filming for the 10th season was wrapped and episodes were already airing, Sandoval was performing a new single, oh my God, with his band when his phone fell out of his pocket. Maddox opened it to discover an intimate recording of a Levis fingering herself allegedly i added that part the next morning maddox notified the show's talent producer who called the showrunner who called baskin who called bravo which scrambled to approve budgets on march 3rd crews were pulled off another bravo set the real housewives of beverly hills and cameras or back up to capture the fallout as the cast pros uh, processed the affair the resulting footage, which aired in May, is an incredible episode of television. Maddox, with damp hair and puffy, cried-out eyes, says, I loved you when you had nothing. And that girl is searching for an identity in men. And I would have followed you anywhere. Producers did not put cameras down, even as Sandoval screamed at them to stop filming uh, during the subsequent reunion special, which was so brutal that Amy Schumer compared it to the end of Schindler's List. Oh my God, Amy Schumer. <laughs> oh goodness. Okay. Then we're not going to read that part. Uh, no one, not Sandoval or Baskin or even the executives at Bravo are quite sure why the season resonated the way it did. Maybe it was that Scandival had awakened something in everyone who had ever been cheated on or cheated, resulting in endless memes and diatribes on social media. Or that the affair landed in the news while the season was airing, turning it into an interactive murder mystery of sorts, yes, with viewers searching for clues in earlier episodes. Oh, yes, I was on the prowl. Now, it is easy to be cynical about these things. Isn't it plausible that when faced with the show's uncertain future, producers got together with the cast and cooked up a cheating scandal? This is a popular conspiracy theory, but Baskin told me 
that the covert affair and continuing fallout was too elaborate to manufacture. I mean, Raquel left the state, he said. When I asked Sandoval, he insisted that if he was going to script a fake storyline, it wouldn't have been one that destroyed his life. I would have never participated in that, he said. Willingly, I said. You would have never participated in that willingly since you did technically <laughs> continue to film the show. Right. Willingly, he said. Hell no. Hell no, dude. Hell no. Look at this dude. Oh, stop. Oh, that is some, that is some American horror story, serial killer vibes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He's at Schwartz and Sandy's. Is that place even still open? At Sandoval's house, he made a cup of tea. But did he make you a dumpling latte? Because then he's trying to bang you and you got to run. And Riley and I, oh my God, Riley run. We're listening to what the past year of his life has been like. Oh, a victim sob story. We've been listening to that all year. The thing with Levis started with what sounded like a midlife crisis. Yes, girl. You know when you just feel like you don't know what's cool anymore. Is this what he said? Is this what? This is a direct quote. Obviously, we know this. You know when you just feel like you don't know what's cool anymore? Oh, oh my God. It's the natural progression of aging. Tom, calm down. Go to therapy. Take us Xanax. He said, and your past, your prime, and a little bit of a joke. Yeah, you're describing yourself. Riley nodded. Yeah, you're like really old. Oh my God. Do they have to like check your feet for rotting? Oh God. Okay. Um, he started to feel as though his best years were behind him. He wanted to feel alive again. He and Maddox had grown apart. He planned to tell her about the affair um, as soon as She by Charade came out. Spring, summer, fall, sometime. Um, after the season aired, he didn't want it to play out on the show. When he shouted at producers to stop filming him, he couldn't remember another time in the show's history that he'd done so. Unless he was getting in the shower or something. Don't look at my dong! Like, dude, I just wanted to not feel watched, he said. I wanted to take a breath. God! After he finished filming, he went on to tour with his band, that's a generous term. Tom Sandoval and the most extras. He had to. His bank accounts were overdrawn and he needed the money. We already established that is not bringing in a good revenue. Crowds of people came out to hate on him. They showed up wearing t-shirts that said cheater and worm with a mustache, a name one of his castmates coined. Everywhere he went, people called him a loser. <laughs> Or screamed, Team Ariana, at him. When he returned home, there were groups of strangers with cameras at his house who seemed to be making fun of him. On the show, Sandoval had complained about always being the one to replenish the batteries and other domestic supplies. <laughs> Pedestrian supplies. Um, now, as Maddox filmed her various commercial spots at the home, it had become ad copy for Duracell. I buy my own batteries now. Ooh, I love that. And Bic razors. I'm just starting a whole new unclogged chapter in my life. In June, a friend sent him a photo of Sweet Lady Jane, a popular bakery in Los Angeles, selling cakes with send a liar, send a liar, written in frosting. Oh, R.I.P. Sweet, uh, Sweet Lady Jane and that wonderful cake that Sandoval uses to victimize himself. Sandoval's friends distanced themselves. His brother asked him to delete photos of them together on Instagram. Oh my God, even your brother knows you're a creep. Sandoval says he was asked to stop going into Schwartz and Sandy's a lounge in the Franklin Village neighborhood that he co-owns in a strip mall. The show's fans tanked the bar's Yelp reviews and were harassing the staff. Prove it. Prove it. Somehow people got Sandoval's cell number. Oh my God, bro. His phone started ringing at all hours with block numbers, with women pretending to be Levis and men asking how they could find her. He started to feel as if he were in Uncaught Joms. He was the muse for Uncaught Joms. The nerve-jolting Safty Brothers movie in which the protagonist is isolated and on the run. You wish, Sandoval, Uncaught Joms. Um, okay. Oh, my God. He got down, like really down, you guys. His mind went to some dark place. His friends suggested that he get on well butrin. He's like, no, do you the moose you fat. In April, he quit drinking, hence the tea he was now sipping. 
He did it for Levis. Oh, God. When he, uh, when she entered the facility in Arizona, he assumed they would be together when she got out. But then Levis stopped talking to him and hasn't returned his calls since June. Oh, my God. Oh my, I feel like we need some some sad music to play under this. Oh, someone said, here come the guns. Here come the guns. Oh, no. Oh, can we hear the lo-fi? Can you guys hear it? I need night driving. Oh. Okay, here we go. Let me know if it's too loud. Oh, it's getting serious, you guys. It's getting really serious. Love us up talking to him. I wouldn't return his phone call since June. She never even gave me any closure, he said. It was ha really hard. It still messes with me. He even tried reaching out through her publicist, but got no response. When Vanderpump started filming season 11 in June, Sandoval was off doing special forces for special people. The reality show on Fox that puts celebrities through pseudo-military training. I'm here because I want to get punished, Sandoval says on the show. Before he's dunked in frigid waters and dragged across a field on the former Nickelodeon star JoJo Siwa's back. That's embarrassing. When Sandoval didn't win the competition, he felt robbed. I got robbed. He thought producers made it look as though he got eliminated before Siwa, who voluntarily withdrew. They said she lasted longer than me, he said. But the mo but she most definitely did not. Oh my God, this man said this. This man is mad at Jojo Siwa. The lady carried you, okay? The lady carried you because you were too weak, sir. So he's mad. He said he got robbed. Okay, I heard you got robbed. And he said he thinks the producers made it look like he got eliminated before Jojo Siwa. And he's like, they said she lasted longer than me. But she most definitely did not. She didn't. He was convinced that producers didn't want him to win. Who do they want to win? Riley asked, <laughs> incredulous Riley. Who do they want to win? Slay King, slay. Check your TikTok, Tom. In the fall, he thought things might finally be turning. He started his own podcast and titled it, Everybody Loves Tom. Mm. An early guest was Dr. Drew, who dug into Sandoval's childhood trauma and declared him not a narcissist. Ugh. At least as far as the DSM-5 is concerned. Dr. Drew, you met that man for two seconds. You cannot do that. Stop it. Ugh. The actor, Jerry O'Connell, came on and apologized for having t-shirts made that said Team Ariana. Well, Jerry O'Connell, no offense, all offense, he's thirsty and he will go anywhere. There are cameras and a microphone, you know. But the following month at BravoCon, the annual Las Vegas convention for the network superfans, Sandoval arrived on stage to booze from the 8,000 member audience. <gasps> oh my God, thank you, Elizabeth, for the super sticker. Thank you, sweetie. I asked Sandoval why he thought the scandal got so big. I'm not a pop culture historian, really, he said. But I witnessed the O.J. Simpson thing and George Floyd. And all these big things. Which is really weird to compare this to that. I think, but do you think in a weird way it's a little bit the same? What the fuck? This guy said... Um, when she asked him how he thought the scandal got so big, he said, I'm not a pop culture historian, really? Yeah, no shit. But I witnessed the OJ Simpson thing and George Floyd and all these big things, which is really weird to compare this to that. But do you think in a weird way, it's a little bit the same? Is this do? Oh my God. Do not mention George Floyd in the same sentence as you, uh, you are creepy like OJ. I'll give you that. But this is this is the Dolulu. The Dolulu. I looked over at Riley and Riley was like, who's OJ? I can't drink OJ because I have a little bit of like acid reflux. I don't know. I've never heard of these people before. So the reporter, I looked over at Riley, who is typing furiously on her phone. Oh, she's texting. Riley doesn't care. I think I knew what he meant. He was trying to express the oddity of becoming the symbolic center of a nationwide discussion and a major news story. What he communicated instead was something more honest, which is just how much the experience had made him lose perspective. Oh God, this man is like, what? He's gotta be on the, I don't, I think this is how his brain works now. 
I mean, he's just not smart. He's not a smart. He's like, I'm not a smart man, Riley, but I do know what love is. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I did what I did because I was in an unhappy place in my life. Uh, he said, I got caught up in my emotions uh, and fully fell in love. Uh, like, for real. Uh. He sighed and drained his teacup. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> then he got up, put on some upbeat music, and went upstairs to get ready for a night out. Oh god. Sometimes he says sometimes he says too much, Riley said. Sometimes he talks a lot. Like, you know how like old people talk a lot? Like my parents, they're like Gen X or Xennials or I forget, although maybe they're millennials. Anyway, you know how like old people talk a lot? Like people over 25 are always like, well, well, listen to me. And it's like, just text it to me. Like he's like he tries to call me on the phone. Oh my God. He like literally will be like, Riley, I'm going to call you. And I'm like, nobody calls anyone anymore, Grandpa Tom. And he like fucking talks to me. It's like so creepy. It's really weird that he like, want, I'm like, text it, bro. Seriously. If you can't put it in the acronym, like, I don't want to hear it. TLDR, like, uh, not going to do it. All right. So Riley says, sometimes he talks too much. And the following day, oh, sometimes he talks. Oh my God. Riley said this, you guys. She said, sometimes he talks too much. Riley said, and the following day forgets what he says. He has dementia. He has Joe Biden dementia. Are you telling me he's dementia? Riley said, you forget what you say. You keep telling the old football stories. Oh, my God. You're like Al Bundy. You're like, and then one time in 2009, I was on Vanderpump and everyone liked me and there was a Miami girl. He's telling the same stories. <laughs> this PR person, Riley, is amazing. I love her. Yeah, he talks too much and then the next day he forgets what he says. I don't know if it's like the uh, 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 alcohol or it's just like he's just like really his brain's old. Then she went upstairs to have a quick word with him. Oh, God. Oh, my God. PR training more is very needed, right? Oh, my God. <laughs> okay. This is so good. This is too good. Okay. The next day, I was supposed to attend the taping of one of Sandoval's confessional interviews for the show. I was about to get in my car when I received a text from his publicist, Riley's boss, which probably is Riley's dad. Shout out to nepotism. He'd rather you don't attend today, it read. He's not feeling the best. Oh, he got moody Monday. The next morning, I got a call from Baskin. And the day after that, a Bravo publicist rang me late on a Friday. Some of what Sandoval had said had gotten back to Bravo, and everyone was concerned. <laughs> Riley's like, hey, Dad, it's Riley. I'm with that old guy you got my first job for PR crisis on. I think he compared himself to, like, George Floyd. So you might want to do something. TLDR, don't call me. Bye, send. Okay. So the next morning, the reporter got a call from Baskin. And the day after that, a Bravo publicist rang the reporter late on a Friday. Some of what Sandoval had said had gotten back to Bravo and everyone was concerned. What was it that he said about O.J. Simpson and George Floyd exactly? Maybe Sandoval wasn't ready for this. The Bravo publicist asked <laughs> if I really needed to see Sandoval again. Could the network facilitate an interview with one of the show's other stars? They were going to probably bring in Tom Schwartz to bail him out with his sleepy talking. Oh, my goodness. So they called her. They're like, mm, can you remind? What did he say exactly? Maybe he wasn't ready for this. He's only 55. He's like, you know, he's still young. Hmm. Yeah, we're going to have to, like, bring someone more likable on there. Oh, my God. Bravo said it would get back to me about next steps. While I waited, I thought more about Sandoval. When you're lost, sometimes it's helpful to go back to the beginning. Sandoval arrived in Los Angeles in 2004 with the hopes of becoming an actor. Riley wasn't even born then. You guys, this is crazy. His crisis PR person probably wasn't born then. Um, He wanted to become an actor when he was growing up in St. Louis, it was all he wanted to be. I love to pretend, he told me and Riley. <laughs> I loved it more than like sports. 
at 15, he started modeling. He briefly lived in Miami, that um, swampy hub of male modeling where he was photographed by Bruce Weber for one of his infamous Abercrombie and Fitch campaigns. In Los Angeles, he worked as a pool boy at the Mondrian Hotel and as a cater waiter while booking ad campaigns for Rockin' Republic, Ed Hardy, and Von Dutch, the early aughts brands that are apparently coming back now. Ah, oh, Von Dutch. I love that brand, Riley said. <laughs> I had a versatile look, Sandoval explained, because like I could do this like daddy doesn't love me emo look. And I could do more slicked back look. Tom says he has a versatile look. He could do the daddy doesn't love me emo look. And he could do a more slicked back look. Thank you, chicken head, for the super chat. I sit in my office shaking my head. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Daddy doesn't love me. A more slicked back look. Oh, my God. This dude takes himself so seriously. He signed up for Vanderpump Rules because he thought people should see what it's like being an L.A. actor, a model actor. Like driving down the 405, he said. Changing clothes, comp cards, headshots, splayed all over my back seat. Not splayed. Splayed all over my back seat. When the show became known, instead for his girlfriend sleeping with his friend Jax Taylor, Sandoval didn't mind. When I punched Jax... He said, that sent it into the stratosphere. Riley remembered watching that episode with her middle school friends. Oh, my God. We were like, this show is epic. Slay King, she said. Dude, it was, Sandoval said. It was so cool, Riley said. A decade later, <laughs> Sandoval, who had boyish innocence about him in those early seasons, was morphed into a unique Los Angeles species. He's late to everything. His publicist never seems to be able to reach him. And his face has that taut sheen that celebrities get from anti-aging protocols. He talks about his life, not in years, but in seasons and episodes. Sometimes he pauses mid-sentence and stares into the middle distance. Like a doll whose wind-up key is jammed. Until whatever ambulance, helicopter, or other sound interfering entity has passed. And then he continues as if nothing happened. Even when there are no mics or cameras on him. <laughs> the ceiling lights in his home are taped over with sheets of paper to diffuse light and make it optimal for filming. He used to remove them during the off season, but now he doesn't bother. We leave them up there because otherwise, <sighs> they'll just do it again, he said. <sighs> So profound. Sandoval can't always tell if he's living for himself or the show or both. Sometimes he really has to talk to his best friend and co-star, Tom Schwartz. But he knows he shouldn't via text. So he will call producers and ask how quickly they could have cameras on him to film it. He feels terrible when he has to bring up something that he knows could be damaging to his castmates. Yeah, right. But that's part of the job. The worst thing Sandoval says you can hear while filming is the dreaded, hey, can I talk to you for a minute? That's when you know you're about to be called out for something. Baskin calls this hyper reality. In real life, you might go to a dinner party and then go home and gossip about your friends. On a reality show, you're encouraged to say those things in the moment. Sandoval is, Sandoval is so well trained at narrating his innermost thoughts out loud that he sometimes has to remind himself not to do so outside of filming. Cringe. You lose track of what normal conversation would be like uh, with people that aren't on the show, uh, he said. Despite the year he had, he told me that he was really honored to be on Vanderpump. The scandal has made the show so big. It's kind of cool and crazy, he said. Even though it's negative and at my expense. Oh. Unlike actors, reality show participants are not protected by the Screen Actors Guild. At least not for unscripted work. Meaning they're not entitled to residuals or union pay. Minimums, Bethany Frankel. When Sandoval joined Vanderpump Rules, each cast member made 10000 for the entire first season. Today, 
the original cast makes closer to $35,000 per episode. As the genre has grown, participants can make almost as much from other revenue streams like books, podcasts, brand partnerships, some of which can pay upward of $250,000, the same amount Tom allegedly still owes his mom. Because of this, what's good for Vanderpump is generally good for Sandoval, monetarily speaking, even if it can also make his life more difficult. Opportunities often grow directly out of plot lines. When Sandoval and Maddox were bartenders in love, they published a book with a co-authored title, Fancy AF Cocktails, and were hired to mix drinks and sponsored videos for brands like Alka-Seltzer. Since their breakup, their fates have diverged. She's the betrayed woman courageously rebuilding her life while he's the villain endlessly atoning for his sins. He don't atone. In December, Maddox released a new book called Single AF Cocktails and Scheduled Events with Live Nation, an evening for bad bitches to promote it. Playing all of this up riles the fans and keeps the machine turning. When Maddox said at BravoCon that she still hadn't gotten a meaningful apology from Sandoval, and the audience erupted in applause. It reminded me of professional wrestling. You know, when the face and the heel talk smack to each other to drive crowds wild, it felt like that. Except that I'm pretty sure that Sandoval is not pretending. <laughs> Pro wrestling has always been staged and the audience knew it, but didn't care. But Vanderpump is sort of the opposite. While fans on some level expect reality TV to be fake, and think of Sandoval as just another TV character, it's all very real to him. Very simple-minded. Leaving him trapped inside these storylines indefinitely. Tom Sandoval is Tom Sandoval in Tom Sandoval's life, Baskin told me. Adding, someone might say he is putting on a performance, but he is the performance. His entire existence becomes... Uh, about processing and talking about what happened. Appearing on Special Forces, we was part of Sandoval's attempt at his redemption narrative. When we drove to West Hollywood that first night, his Mercedes wound its way through Laurel Canyon and emerged on Sunset Boulevard, not far from the huge billboard that showed him commando crawling across a rope suspended high above the ground. These are the perverse economics of being a reality TV star. If it weren't for Sandoval or Scandoval, Sandoval said, if it weren't for Scandoval, Sandoval said, I could have probably gotten, I probably, I could have probably gotten on that show, but I wouldn't have been on the billboards. Oh. So he's like, I still would have got on the show, but I wouldn't have been on the billboards. Okay. Contestants on special forces were reportedly paid several hundred thousand dollars. Pay your mom back, Tom. And let us know. Give us an update. That's part of your storyline. For the most part, Sandoval hasn't been able to capitalize on Scandoval as much as he would like. There are minimal brands that want to be associated with someone who's thought of as a cheater. Sandoval's manager talks just like him. Ryan Revel told me. This winter, Sandoval was hoping to do a residency at Chippendales in Las Vegas. Oh, gross. But talk stalled, just like his wiener. Sandoval was disappointed. I'm in, oh, I'm in really good shape right now, he said, adding, it's frustrating because you know everybody cashed in. Everybody won on this, the cast, the execs, the network. Everybody made so much money. But I try to put it on myself to make the best opportunity I can. Oh my gosh, this dude. We pulled up to Tom Tom, a bar and restaurant that Sandoval has invested in, and that is part <coughs> of the Vanderpump universe, along with Sir Schwartz and Sandy's and Jax's Studio City. Mm. And something about her, a forthcoming sandwich shop that may never open. That Maddox is opening with another cast member. For the fans, this landscape is like a Disney world populated by their favorite characters. When I stopped by Sir in August, the food was terrible. But there was a line of people out the door. I mean, it's not that great, I'll be honest. Around the block. No matter... Uh, no matter what part of the restaurant you sat in, you had a view of cameras filming the cast, which seemed to be the point. 
Oh, they took it with the sir in the back. Oh my God. Um, at Tom, Tom Sandoval gave me an insider's tour. There's the men's room, women's room. He said, this table is really cool, but you gotta watch your knees. Ah, he took me out back by the trash cans where he says Maddox ripped his chain and split his lip. The night she found out about the affair. Way to go, Ariana. He says, she beat my ass Through a representative, Maddox declined to comment on the incident. Uh, she has denied tearing his necklace off in the past. Listen, that's uh, that horrible, horrible lightning bolt necklace. No. Um, we don't advocate violence except for when we advocate violence. Okay? Okay. All right. Obviously, obviously, obviously. Okay. So, um, uh, so Ariana declined to comment on the incident. She has denied tearing his necklace off in the past with the show, not in production. The place was quiet except for a couple drinking wine in the corner and two eager looking women, one of whom eventually approached. Sorry to bother you. She said, but I just wanted to say this place is awesome. We sat at the table and were soon joined by Kyle Chan. Oh, this poor reporter has been put through so much. A jeweler who appears on the show and is one of the few people who didn't drop Sandoval as a friend. When I asked what it was like being around him last year, Chan compared it to watching Game of Thrones. For the incest? In which a character named Theon Greyjoy becomes psychologically broken after being tortured and castrated. Oh, I wish Sandoval likes to say that as a reality star, he has to live through each event of his life three times. First, when he's living it. Second, when he's taping um, conf confessional months later. And third, when it airs, he has to answer to the fans. In the real world, he would be able to heal and move on. But that's difficult to do on a reality show time. Oh, after season 11 airs, Chan said, you just have to relive it one more time. And then you'll be free now because... You can stream it over and over and over and over again. A couple of weeks before I met Sandoval, I visited the offices of Evolution Media in a converted shipping warehouse near the Hollywood Burbank Airport. Bravo, which is owned by NBC Universal, distributes Vanderpump via its cable channel and the streaming service Peacock. But Evolution is the production company on the ground for Vanderpump, as well as others like Real Housewives of Orange County and Botched. That's still on. As Baskin showed me around, random objects caught my eye. A can of gasoline bottles, bottles of Tums and Sunblock, a blown up diagram of the female reproductive system atop a file cabinet, and a few moving boxes labeled bitch. <laughs> the office used to be bustling, but in the years leading up uh, to and during the Panacookin, streaming was at its peak. The evolution uh, and Evolution was considering leasing a third building to keep up the demand for new content. But the market had changed and people were working remotely. Now we just don't need the space, Baskin said. Bravo is one of the few cable networks that still bring in a loyal and affluent audience. Oh my God, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, but even unscripted programming has not been immune to the contraction uh, currently plaguing the TV industry. In 2007, when the Writers Guild went on strike, networks rushed to greenlight unscripted shows to plug holes in programming, leading to a reality TV boom in 2023, despite predictions. Otherwise, the boom never came. Networks and streamers, which already had a stockpile of programming, held on to their cash. And with media companies consolidating into entities like Warner Brothers Discovery, there were simply fewer buyers in the marketplace. Baskin estimated that when all is said and done, the unscripted business would be roughly two thirds of what it was. Hmm. Over the years, various network executives have consistently asked Baskin for their own version of Vanderpump, Southern hospitality. Baskin would love to find it, but it doesn't necessarily exist, he told me. Not that others haven't tried. There was Ease, What Happens at the Abbey, about the bar a few doors down from Tom Tom and the MTV's Lindsay Lohan's Beach Club. About the staff at her venture in Mykonos, each lasted exactly one season. This spring, Hulu will premiere Vanderpump Villa. Are you guys going to watch? Um, yet another attempt to mimic the formula, and Bravo will introduce The Valley, 
a Vanderpump spinoff featuring some of the cast members who departed the show in 2020. Baskin told me that in some ways, he wished Scandival never happened. The national attention made it much harder to film the show. Production always had a few onlookers during season 11, uh, or but during a season 11, paparazzi and fans were everywhere. While the show was filming in Lake Tahoe, someone snapped a photo of the cast that whipped fans into such a frenzy that it became a plot line on the show. It was Sheena with Sandoval, I remember. Producers used to be strict about not breaking the fourth wall, but now they have no choice but to let the outside world into frame. It used to be that the real story was not that there are people watching a TV show, Baskin told me, but part of Tom Sandoval's real experience in life right now is that he's not just facing an ex-girlfriend or a friend group upset with him. He's facing an entire nation. As filming for the new season got underway, Bravo had a problem. The cast had turned on Sandoval. Maddox refused to interact with him altogether. In July, Baskin and the network brought the cast into Evolution's offices for what he called a come to Jesus moment. But he was no longer talking to 20-something waiters. We can still squeeze a great season out of it, he said. But going forward, I don't know. Levis was the only primary cast member who didn't return for season 11. Her team inquired about a pay increase and floated the possibility of Levis getting a developmental deal with a development deal with Bravo. Oh, you wanted a development deal, Rachel? Through a representative, Levis emphasized that mental health protections were her primary concern. So it wasn't that she wanted a development deal and more money. It was mental health. It was her mental health, you guys. Don't worry. Oh, my goodness. Then in August, after spending 90 days in the Arizona facility and changing her name from Raquel back to her birth name, Rachel Savannah Levis appeared on Bethany Frankel's podcast. Frankel is a former Real Housewife of New York. Last summer, she declared what she called the reality reckoning, accusing Bravo and other networks of profiting off of harmful environment created by their shows without properly compensating their stars. She invited others to join her and teamed up with two prominent attorneys, Mark Garagos and Brian Friedman. No actual lawsuits have been filed. Interesting. Um, but NBC Universal subse um, subsequently issued updated guidelines. Oh my God, my cat scared the shit out of me till I didn't even know you were in here. I love you so much. But you scared me. I was in the moment. I love you, baby. Okay. Uh <laughs> Oh, okay, blah, 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 blah. Part of Frankel's arsenal was a three-part interview with Levis who described how she felt exploited by Sandoval and Bravo for ratings without seeing a single penny. Baskin told me that Levis was paid $19,000 per episode for 18 episodes and that the news of the affair came out after the season wrapped. Are we supposed to give her retroactive payment for having a uh, clandestine... Uh, Affair for eight months, he asked. Frankel would basically argue, yes, as SAG members went on to strike in July, joining the writers. She called for reality stars to unionize so they too can collect residuals and benefit at clandestine. Why did I say? Okay, sorry. Um, so she called for them to unionize so they too can collect residuals and benefits after the fact from a successful season. But while everyone I talked to agreed that regulations would be a good thing, they would. No one was sure how it would work exactly. Part of the appeal of reality TV is that it's relatively cheap to make, as low as $250,000 per episode versus $2 million for scripted television. The draw for all parties involved is that its stars are often plucked from relative obscurity. It's probably good for the business to have some protections, uh, Revel Sandoval's manager told me. Will it happen? I don't know. But no one is walking off set. Oh, here's Tom with his legs spread. Close them up, slotty slot. Close them up. <laughs> oh, how long is this article? I didn't see Sandoval for about two weeks. Oh, he was he had a long, moody Monday. Then on a Monday in December, I drove to a soundstage in Burbank where he was taping his next confessional interview for the show. Riley, oh, yay, Riley's back, wasn't here this time. Oh, no. Instead, we were joined by a Bravo publicist. Oh, my God, Riley got fired. Oh, poor Riley. So they were joined by a Bravo publicist um, and Erica Forstad, a senior NBC Universal executive. Damn, Tom, you got to be babysat by executives. Oh, no. 
Oh no. Uh, my clue that this wasn't typical was when Forstead uh, introduced herself to Sandoval. Oh, she, he didn't even know her. Oh, the senior NBC Universal executive. <laughs> You once made me a wonderful mocktail at Schwartz and Sandy, she said. Ah, Sandoval was in a small dressing room applying dabs of makeup to his forehead. Um, in front of him were three caffeinated beverages, a Red Bull, an iced coffee, and a Dr. Pepper. Where was his beloved squirt? He sipped each. Oh, we got to. Oh, I don't think I have the, the squirt pulled up. Oh, we used to have a Sandoval squirt thing but i don't think we have that anymore oh bummer bummer city township okay so um all right so he's got a lot of caffeine okay addictive personality faux show um he sipped each intermittently sandoval said he was feeling depressed he said the same thing the last time i saw him when i asked if the depression was show related he said somewhat show related just life business stuff it's hard oh. Sandoval began to perform loud vocal exercises. Oh my God, this poor woman. He applied pomade to his hair, combing it through with his fingers and changed uh, into a light blue women's suit from Zara. <laughs> Which he said he preferred to the store's menswear. The suit looked good, but the sleeves barely reached his wrists. As he emerged from the dressing room, there was something about the suit's feminine cut combined with Sandoval's physique and slightly hunched posture that reminded me of Heath Ledger's Joker in the scene at the hospital where he wears a nurse's uniform. Damn, she is dragging him. Oh, my God. It's hard to tell how Sandoval feels about filming the show. Sometimes he sounded down on it. It has its fun moments, but, like, for the most part, it sucks. Uh. I've been buzzed through most of it. Duh. Other times he told me he would do it for as long as he possibly could. There was a point last year when he considered quitting, but then he realized he has no other skills, um, allegedly, but he was glad he didn't. He wasn't at all envious of Levis, uh -huh, who walked away from the cameras, albeit not very far, as she has started her own podcast, Rachel Goes Rogue. So far, the primary theme has been Scandaval. Sandoval figured she would be back in a season or two. What else is she going to do? Uh, he asked. <laughs> oh, my gosh. The Evolution set where confessionals are tape is designed to look like another room from Sir. Blah, 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 blah. Let's move ahead. Uh, Tom said, I have never even remotely heard of water tasting before in my life, Sandoval said. He tried it again. I have never heard of or been to a water tasting, but here we are. So he was drinking water. Sandoval hoped his luck would turn this season. It's probably why he agreed to speak with me in the first place. When I last talked to him, he was feeling optimistic. He'd been meditating and was about to go back on tour with his cover karaoke band with Jason, the guy who always has a laptop over his boner during the podcast. Because he got a bone every time. Plus, he was single now, which could be a whole new storyline for him on the show. It's the first time I've been single as a celebrity, uh, he told me. I'm not saying I'm a favorite celebrity, but still, having some notoriety and being single, uh, it's a cool muscle to flex. Uh. Dude, you're too old. You're too old for this kind of talk. Though he had come to Los Angeles to be an actor, he was proud of what he became instead. Oh, my God. Did he become the next Brad Pitt? No. But he didn't want to be that anymore anyway. It turned out reality TV is where the real stakes are. Actors are just pretending, playing roles. I had no respect for reality TV before, ah, Sandoval told me. And now, like, I don't have very much respect for actors. Ah. I'm like, y'all try doing this, ah. Oh, my God. Of course, he knew it wasn't going to last forever. But if he kept at it and rehabilitated his image, there could be a life beyond his first show. There were brand deals to be had as well as reality spinoffs and competition shows. Though, if he was going to do another reality series, he would like it to be something more feel good. Our show can be toxic to film. Uh, real toxic. Uh, he said, and very stressful. Uh. Despite this, he was as committed to it as ever and hoped it would continue for a while. As long as people are interested, he told me, and we're being honest in our feels. What, sir? You are 80. You shouldn't be saying in our feels. 
That is for Riley and her TikTok friends. That's what he was doing now, sitting in front of a camera in a powder blue suit and sunless tanner being honest in his feels. I watched him on a monitor as he peered into the lens with one eyebrow slightly raised. Then the camera rolled and his face lit up with big, with a big genuine smile. The end. Ir Ir Irina Alexander is a contributed writer for the magazine. And bless her, bless her. Her last feature article was about Oscar campaign strategists. And Holly Andres is the photographer. And I feel bad for both of these women. And they deserve a raise -ah! A raise -ah! Okay, you guys. We are now over two hours into this, but we got through the entire article and Rachel Raquel's podcast for our Vanderpump pregame show. I will be back later with a Vanderpump Rules roast and recap of the episode. Thank you guys so much for joining. All right. She really did paint a beautiful picture, beautiful writing. Well done. Um, again, two women covering a man with no talent. Oh, the Barbie movie is real. It's real. She deserves a raise. Yes, you are so welcome, Melissa. Don't forget to hit that like on your way out. Shout out to everyone who participated in the live chat. I love hearing from you guys. However, I didn't get to get to all of your comments. So please comment after the video posts and tell me all your thoughts, hopes, dreams, and opinions regarding all of this that we went over today. Shout out to everyone uh, for the super chats. Chickenhead PK Neely, thank you, artists. Gigi, Jennifer, Molly, Jill, NYCNP, Elizabeth. Um, thank you guys so very much. You're all amazing. And, uh, you know, should I do bedtime stories? I'll think about it. I'll think about it. And I'll see you very shortly for the Vanderpump um, episode four roast and recap. Subscribe if you haven't already. And like I always say, enjoy yourself. It's later than you think. Oh, bye. If you like what you see.